In this section, you will learn about the different kinds of data you can work with in your Python programs. You will also learn how to use variables to represent data in your programs. So what really happens when you run main.py program? So let's take a closer look at what Python does when you run this program. And as you can see here, Python does a fair amount of work when it, even when it runs a simple program, right? So when you run this code, you should see this following output here. So, uh, so when you run this program, the ending PE here indicates that the file is a Python program. So your editor then runs the file through the Python interpreter, which reads through the program and determines what each word in the program means. For example, when the interpreter says the world print here, followed by the parentheses like this, it prints this screen, whatever is inside in the parentheses. So as you write your programs, your editor highlights different parts of your program in different ways. For example, it recognizes the print uh, is the name of a function and displays that word in one color. It recognizes that hello world python or uh, hello typhoon is not a python code and it displays that phrase in a different color as you can see in this case it's uh, green and it, this is this is called the syntax highlighting so here for example this is a green right so this is syntax highlighting the python tells us this is a string that's going to be print on the screen and this is a function built-in function that python has and this these are the parentheses here let's see here so whatever we write inside this parenthesis will be printing here and let's try using a variable with this print here so now we will add a new line at the beginning of the file and modify the uh, second line so we will create a message or my super or my super message here and now we will let's make it this message hello hello the phone welcome to this python course and here after that we will print this message oh like this print and inside this we will enter our message print my super message and now let's run this program and let's see what happens uh, by the way you can run this program with shift and f10 this combination of shortcut and you can also run this by pressing this run main button here and so we added variable named message here this message here every variable is connected to a value right which is the information associated with that variable in this case our this variable here let me actually get my pen yes so this variable here this variable here is connected so this is the value so this value here is connected to my super message named variable so adding a variable makes a little more work for python interpreter when it processes the first line so this is the first line firstly it uh, so uh, it associates this variable my super message with the hello typhoon welcome to the python course uh, value so when it reaches the second line so uh, when it reaches the second line it prints the value associated with my super message in this which in this case it's welcome oh hello typhoon welcome to this python course here right and let's expand uh, on this program by modifying this main pe to print a second message now let's add a blank line here and then add two new lines of code so here we will again write my uh, super message and this is the best and fastest python course in the world and that's it now we will again uh, print the message which is my super message now you now here let's run this and you you will see what happens now so you can change the value of variable in your program at any time and python will always keep track of its 
current value. So for example, in the when we first defined my super message, its value was this. Hello Typhoon, welcome to this Python course. And this is the print that we printed here. And the second variable, this is the same variable, right? These are the same. These are the same for now. These are the same variables, but they uh, for after line four, they do not contain the same values. That's it. You can change variables every whenever you want in Python. And here, now let's learn about the naming and using our variables, which is you will need in a Python a lot of times. So I'm waiting you in the next lecture. When you're using variables in Python, you need to adhere to a few rules and grid lines. Breaking some of these rules will cause errors. Other grid lines just help you write code that's easier to read and understand. And be sure to keep the rules in mind when working with variables. So first, let's start with variable names. So variable names can contain only letters, numbers, and underscores. They can start with a letter or an underscore, but not with a number here. For instance, you can call variable message underscore one. So you can define variables like this, but you cannot define one underscore message, but not like this. And this is a mistake because you cannot define a variable that starts with a number, right? So this is a mistake. And you cannot define variable with spaces here. So avoid and also avoid using Python keywords and function names as variable names. For example, do not use word as print. Uh, as a variable name so python has reserved it for a particular programmatic purpose and variable names should be short but descriptive for example name is better than n or student name student name is better than s n right so and so the name length name length here is better than length of person's name right so be careful when using the lowercase letters um and uppercase letter the lowercase letter l and uppercase letters the o here because they could be confused with the numbers one and zero and it can take some practice to learn how to create a good variable names especially as your programs uh, become more interesting and complicated as you write more programs and start to read through the other people's code you will get better at coming up with meaningful names so and avoid name errors when using variables as well so every programmer makes a mistakes and the most mistake and most make mistakes every day although good programmers might create errors and they also know how to respond to those errors efficiently so let's look at an error you are likely to make early on and learn how to fix it so here we will write some uh, code that generates an error on purpose so now we'll write this following message so message uh, my super mega message and message here and we will make this message for example hello every student from your instructor your typhoon here and here we will print this message print my super mega message so when let's run this here this is so when an error occurs in your program, the program, the Python interpreter uh, does its best to help you figure out where the problem is. The interpreter provides a traceback when a program uh, cannot run successfully. So a traceback is a record uh, of where the interpreter ran into trouble when trying to execute your code. Now we will write this. For example, uh, this is the this code is successfully interpreted here and run and let's it is s from the one s from the message and let's run it and as you can see here this is our traceback this is an example of traceback that python provides after you accidentally misspelled a variable's name so here we will need 
an S here, right? So, uh, and as you can see here, the name my super mega message is not defined here, and we have an error in line two. And the output reports that an error occurs in line two of the file of main.py. So the interpreter throws this line to help us spot the error quickly and tells us what kind of error it found. And in this case, it found a name error and here name name error and reports that the variable being printed message has not been defined. That's because we entered the wrong value in it and in a name error it usually means we either forgot to set a variable's value before using it or we made the spelling mistake when entering the variable's name as we did here and if the python finds a variable name that's similar to that one it doesn't recognize it will ask if that's the name you meant to use so in this example we omitted the letter s uh, in the variable name uh, my super mega message in the second line so the python interpreter doesn't spell check your code but it does ensure that the variable names are spelled consistently for example watch what happens when we spell the message incorrectly in the line that defines the message here so let's make it again and as you can see here our code is run successfully so the, in this case the program has, runs successfully right so the variable names match so python sees no usual so as a result and programming languages are strict but they disregard good and bad spelling so as a result you don't need to consider english spelling and grammar rules when you are trying to create variable names and writing code so many programming uh, errors are simple single character typos in one line of program if you find yourself spending a long time searching for one of these errors know that you are in a good company and um, many experienced and talented programmers spend hours hunting down these kinds of tiny errors and try to like laugh about it and move on so knowing it will happen frequently throughout your programming life and we also uh, need to know about variables so variables are labels so variables are often described as boxes like this that you can store values in it so for example let's name it the uh, variable oh sorry let's actually get the pen so let's make it variable variable and we have the value so the idea can be helpful um so the idea, this idea can be helpful the first few times you use a variable but it isn't an accurate way to describe how variables are represented internally in python so it's a much better to think of variables as a labels that you can assign to values you can also say that a variable references a certain value so this distinction probably won't matter much in your initial programs but it's worth learning earlier than, rather than later at some point you will see unexpected behavior from a variable and an accurate understanding of how variables work will help you identify what's happening in your code and the best way to understand new programming concepts is to try using them in your program so if you get stuck while working on exercise in this course try doing something else for a while so if you are still stuck review the relevant part of that section and watch this lecture again if you still need help you can ask me anytime and i will and i will answer you immediately note that the this assignment sign in the statement for example user age uh, equals 19 has a different meaning from the sign we learned in math so in programming this assignment sign is known as an assignment sign we actually in the program is equal equal sign so it means we are assigning the value on the right side of the sign this is the value that we are assigning to this variable in the left side a good way to understand the statement user age equals 19 is to think of the user age uh this right so this statement a 
equals p and b equals a has a very different meanings in programming confused <laughs> an example could clear this out so let's type this following here x equals or a equals 5 b e b equals 10 and let's and a equals b here right so now we will print this uh, here print our a equals to a and print again our b equals to b right and now let's run the program and as you can see here here a equals to 10 b equals to 10 um so now about a has an initial value of 5 you can see here declared on the first line and the third line uh, a equals b assigns the value of uh, the b to a here so we are assigned with this code we are assigning the value of b to a and now we are assigned in the first line we are assigning 5 to a and after that we are assigning 10 to b so here are a equals to 5 uh, the and now b b we don't have b here so we don't have b here and here b a equals to 5 b equals to 10 and here our a equals to 10 and b equals to 10 here and next we can uh, modify this by changing only one statement so let's change the third line from a equals b to b equals a now let's run this program again and as you can see we have a equals 5 and b equals 5 and uh, here mathematically the a equals b and b equals a mean the same thing however this is this is not so in programming and now let's run this program again and as you can see we got this a equals 5 b equals 5 so you can see that in this example the value the a value remains as 5 but the value of b is changed to 5 from 10 so this is because the statement is in the third line b equals a assigns the value of a to b and b becomes uh, b becomes 5 while a remains unchanged as 5 because most programs define and gather some sort of data and then do something useful with it it helps to classify different types of data the first data type we'll look at is strings strings are quite simple at first glance but you can use them in many different ways the string is series of characters anything inside quotes here is considered a string in python you can use a single uh, or double quotes around your strings like this so this is a flexibility allows you to quotes and a pass drops within your strings so let's explore some of the ways you can use with strings this we can also change the case in a string with methods so one of the simplest tasks you can do with a string is change the case of the word in a string let's look at this following code let's in here name this this is the world's best python course here and um, here we will print is our name right name dot python python and let's make it this here that's it now let's run this here with a uh, shift and f10 shortcut or you can press on this button as well and as you can see here this is the world's best python course right in this example the variable name refers to the lowercase string this is the world's best python course and the method title here appears after the variable in the print call a method is an action that python can perform on a piece of data the dot here this dot here so you can, oh sorry that's actually yes this dot here um after name 
in the name that title tells python to make the title method act on a variable name so we will act this title method on a variable name so um, now every method is followed by a set of parentheses because methods often need additional information to do their work this is the first parenthesis for now it's empty but the print method has something to show us right and that's why we have this parenthesis here and um, here the title function for now doesn't need any additional information so these parentheses are empty and the title method changed each word to a title case where each word begins with the capital uh, letter in this case the t here and is this is the world's best python course so it changed all the words that starts with a capital letter letter and that's what title does here so this is useful because you will often want to think of a name as a piece of information for example you might want to uh, program to recognize the input values of this here for example um this or this or this and or this right so uh you might want to program the recognize these outputs as the same name and display all of them as this right so several other useful methods are available for dealing with case as well for example you can change a string to all uppercase or all lowercase letters like this here let's change this oops actually let's delete this useless information here and now we will use the name that upper which is gonna as you can see here this uh, gave us output with all uppercase characters and we can also use the lower and as you can see here this is the all lowercase and our actually it doesn't, didn't do anything mm, in particularly but because we, our name variable our name volume was the all lowercase so if you do like this oh sorry let's make it the uppercase s uppercase here and as you can see here now we are seeing something that has changed and the lower method is particularly useful for storing data so you typically don't want to trust the capitalization that your users provide so you will convert strings to lowercase before storing them so then when you want to display the information you will use the case that makes most sense for each string you can also use variables in strings which you will learn in next lecture in some situations you will want to use a variable's value inside a string for example you might want to use two variables to represent a parse model and make and speculatively and then combine those values to display some one some cars uh, full model right so now we will make this uh, car here car make and in this case let's actually make it bmw and now car model and here we will make it five hundred five series five are series uh and let's actually make the year right 2014 and now we'll make it car here we will make it f this is the format and car make oh sorry firstly car make and after that we will enter the car model car model right and as you can see this is, that's it now we will print this print car let's print this and as you can see here bmw fiber 2014 and to insert the variable's value into string place a letter f place a letter f uh, immediately before the opening quotation mark here that's uh, what we did here right we placed the letter f and after that put the braces around the name or names of any variable you want to use inside a string and uh, python will replace each variable within uh, its value when its string is displayed in this case it's as you can see the inside braces we have 
car model. We have space here. This is a space here, and that we also have space here. Oops, not here. Here. And we also have car model, which is our car model was five air. 2014 and this is it right and these rings are called so these are uh, these strings here these strings are called the f strings here f strings these strings are called f strings so this f here me uh, means format 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 because python formats the strings by replacing the name of any variable in braces with its value so the output of this um, code will be this here you can change these variables and values as well here so you can do a lot with f strings for example you can use f strings to compose complete message using information associated with a variable as like this for for example we have a car right so we can also do this right so my message my message here it's gonna be in f uh typhoon typhoon drives a car and that's it now let's uh and actually let's use this uppercase uppercase and as you can see here oops uh, we instead we have to change the car so to my message and here typhoon drives a bmw 5r 2014 so that's a full name uh, this is the full message is used in a sentence that creates uh, that sends the user that uh, what typhoon drives and we have the variables that use with the f strings you can also use f strings to compose a message and then assign the entire message to variable as uh, we did here and now uh, we will here uh, let's actually do another here and here we have my message typhoon here my bigger message here and we will do again so i have here my message firstly my message and he crashed it and here we will do print again my bigger message here and as you can see typhoon drives a bmw 5 where 2014 and he crashed it in programming a white space refers to any non-printing characters such as spaces tabs and end of line symbols you can use white space to organize your output so it's easier for users to read now um, let's add a tab to your text and so you you can use the this character combination to add tab to your task so now let's uh, print here print my, this here this is a python tab and after that we will add this character combination or actually let's add this between this is m and python tab t here now let's run it and as you can see here we have a tab here this is a tab so to add a new line in a string you you can use the character combination of n here and as you can see here this is a new line this is a new line and after that we have a, another space character that we used here so let's delete this and this here you are seeing the new line without any spaces here but we can also do like this for example print uh, programming programming languages and languages languages and here we're gonna add the new line and python or we can also be before programming languages let's add character tab so it will look nice so python c plus plus or yes a new line c plus plus new line java new line swift 
And here, as you can see here, we have a tab here, Python, C++, Java, and Swift with new lines here. So you can also combine the tabs and new lines in a single string and the strings in T here, in T, here's Python, to move to a new line and start the next line with tab. Now we will do that here. Let's actually add two tabs here. You can add here. And as you can see here, there are programming languages, Python and C++, with two tabs here. This is the first tab and second tab. First tab and second tab. And here we have Java with only one tab and Swift with only one tab here. And as you can see, it's here. New line tab, new line tab, and new line tab, tab here, and new line tab, tab. So new lines and tabs will be very useful in the next uh, two sections when you start to produce many lines of output from just a few lines of code. Extra white space can be confusing in your programs. To programmers, Python here, Python, and uh, this Python here looks pretty much the same when you print it, right? But to a program, they are two different things. Python detects the extra space in this second Python here and considers it significant unless you tell it otherwise. So it's important to think about white spaces because often you will want to compare two strings to determine whether they are the same or not. For example, one important instance might involve checking people's usernames when they log into a website. Extra white space can be confusing in much simpler situations as well. Unfortunately, Python makes it easy to eliminate extra white space from the data that people enter. So Python can look for extra white space on the right and left side of a string. To ensure that the no white space exists at the right side of a string, you can use uh, the rstrip method. So here, let's actually my best language or my best coding language here so here we will have the python here so python but with white space here as you can see and secondly we will use the my favorite or let's actually print it firstly my best coding language and as you can see it's python here and we have a one white space here obviously now we will do my best coding language dot r strip that's it and here we will print the uh, my best coding language again uh, and here you will see nothing as you can see here they are the same so in order to do that here we will use with here so this is just a temporary we will use the permanent um, method as well but for now it's we're gonna use term temporary here r strip and here we will do that's it and here as you can see we have no white spaces here we have no white spaces here but here we have white one white space right and this is the white space here so with r strip we uh, remove the extra white space on the right side of a string the value associated with my best coding language contains extra white space at the end of the string as you can see here so when you ask python for this value in terminal session you can see the space at the end of the value when the r3 methods acts on the variable my best coding language this extra space is removed however as i said it is only removed temporarily so after that it would do like print uh, the my best coding language again it will still print us with the white space here so this here this this is the third here second here oops second here and this is the first python print here so as i said it's only removed temporarily here this is with the white space again as you can see here so if you ask for the value of uh, my best coding language again the string looks the same as we when it was entered including the extra white space to remove the white space from the string permanently you have to associate the script value with the variable name in order to do that we're going to do 
my best coding language equals my best coding language dot r strip now we will see this here as you can this is the with white space and without white space let's print this more more than one time to see here and as you can see here we will get the same result of course so this is the with, without the white space uh, with the white space and the all of these are without the white space so that's it to remove the white space white space from the string you strip, strip the white space from the right side of the string and then associate this associate new this new value here this new value with this here because our strip here we have and we are associating this my best coding language with stripped version to normal version here so in this example we start with with the so let's actually use this uh, add this here and you will see this and as you can see we, we all have the here now we're gonna do another example so firstly we will define this my best coding language with the two white spaces on the both sides and after that we are my best coding language dot r strip and here we will print it of course firstly print my best coding language dot r strip and here as you can see here we print it with the right strip here so now we're gonna do as well as left strip l strip and here as you can see in the first example we have uh, no right white space but in but we have a left white space but here we have no left space but we have here we have in the right side we have a white space so in order to do that we will firstly associate my best coding language that uh, equals the my best coding language dot l strip of uh, l strip here and after that we will my best coding language my best coding language dot r strip and after that we will print the value so uh, as you remember this is a permanent solution here and as you can see here we have no right spaces or left spaces on the both sides so when working with strings um, another common task is to remove a prefix consider a url with the common prefix of https here we want to remove this prefix so we can focus on the just the part of the url that the user needs to enter into an address bar here's how you do that so udemy url here udemy uh udemy udemy url and here we will enter the udemy url here https and udemy.com and here they will use the udemy url dot remove prefix and here we will enter https here now we will print the udemy url or actually let's print this here print here and here let's see as you can see here we removed the HTTP is from the udemy so enter the name of the variable of the via dot here and then the method is remove prefix inside the parentheses you enter the prefix you want to remove from the original string like we did here so like the methods from the removing white space remove prefix leaves the original string unchanged so if you want to keep the new value with the previous uh, prefix removed either assign it to the original variable variable or assign it to a new variable so now we will use this so my or you udemy url without prefix prefix and here we will enter this uh, udemy url dot remove prefix and https here and here we will enter the print print and udemy url without prefix here and as you can see we removed udemy url uh, that had uh, https prefix before it and we printed it so we have that variable permanently but whenever we try to print this udemy url it will show us the same because we didn't change this udemy url we created new variable here this is the new variable and we took that so we removed the prefix so this has the udemy.com but in the first in the first variable we have 
we have the https udemy.com so these are two separate variables don't confuse here these are two separate variables they don't have the associations and um, only association uh, this variable has is that it only took this from the variable so but they are separate variables and they are uh, can be manipulated separately one kind of error that you might see with some regularity is syntax error. A syntax error occurs when Python doesn't recognize a section of your program as a valid Python code. For example, if you use an apostrophe within a single quote, you will produce an error. This happens because Python interprets everything between the first single quote as the apostrophe and the apostrophe as a string. Uh, so um, it then tries to interpret the rest of the text as python code which causes error so here's a how a single use of double quotes correctly now we will use for example my special uh, message and here we will use this is the fastest and best python course in the world so this is the fastest in or actually let's make the pythons here yes it's my son grammatically incorrect but suggest it is just a code and example so python's course now let's print this message print my special message and as you can see here we have no error even we have a single quotes here so the apostrophe appears inside a set of double quotes so that the, if let's actually make this like that so here we are uh, we're gonna see this here as you can see here this is the fastest code. this is the uh, error like in this is the invalid syntax in order to do that here you have to this backslash here and it will fix the code and if uh, the same applies for the single quotes as well let's actually add our single quotes as you can see here we have a code without a problem and if you add this here pythons and we are seeing error again so um, in the output you can see that error occurs right after the final single quote here so the syntax error indicates that the interpreter doesn't recognize something in the code as a valid python code and it thinks the problem might be a string that's not quoted correctly error can can came from a variety of sources and i will point out some common ones as they erase so you might want to see syntax errors often as you learn to write proper python code so syntax errors are also the least specific kind of error so they can be difficult and frustrating to identify and correct so if you get stuck on particular stubborn error you can ask me and i will answer you immediately numbers are used quite often in programming to keep scoring games represent data in visualizations store information on web applications and so on Python threads numbers in several different ways, depending on how they are being used. So let's uh, first look at how Python manages uh, integers because they are simplest to work with. So you can add, subtract, multiply, and divide integers in Python. Let's uh, do this following example. My value here, 2 plus 2 plus 10 here. And let's print this value, my value. And here you, you can see here, 2 plus 10 is equal to 12, or let's actually uh, 9, subtract here, 99 here, and as you can see here, my negative 9, <laughs> negative 90, and let's multiply it, uh, for example, 5, multiply 5 by 10, oops, multiply 5 by 10, and here we have 50 and the, let's actually divide 5 by 10 and 0 0.5 so in a terminal session you can also python simply returns the result of the operation and here uh, python uses two multiplication simple symbols to represent exponents like this for example 5 exponent 10 is equals to this here for example 3 exponent 3 3 exponent 3 equals 27 and 10 exponent 6, 10 exponent 6 equals 1 here, 1, 2, 3, 1 million here. 
So Python supports the order of operations too. So you can use multiple operations in one expressions. You can also use parentheses to modify the order of operations. So Python can evaluate your expression in the order you specify. For example, this. So my value here, um, two plus three and multiply by four or five. And here you can see the first five by uh, five multiply by five here. So the spacing in these examples has no effect how uh, Python evaluates uh, the expression. It simply helps you more quickly spot the operations that have priority when you are reading through the code. And we also have floats in Python. So Python calls any number with a decimal point. Python calls any number with a decimal point is a float. For example, this 1.478 is float. So this term, this terminology is used in the. Let me actually first fix this here, because our marker menu is will be here somewhere. Yes. So. The term is used uh, in most programming languages and it refers to the fact that a decimal point can appear at any position in a number. So every programming language must be carefully designed to properly manage decimal point numbers. So numbers uh, behave appropriately, no matter where the decimal point appears. For most part, you can use floats without worrying about how they behave. Simply enter the numbers you want to use and Python will most likely do what you expect. For example, 0 0.2 plus 0 0.9 and here 1.1 and here for example uh, 2 multiplication 0 0.2 and here oops sorry yes uh, 0 0.4 and here we have the run it again yes 0 0.4 and here we have 2 multiplication by for example 99 here with some this and here you can see we multiply this number to two so this happens in our languages and it, let's actually there's a, some bug here and <laughs> not bug bug the, you should see it so here we have three multiplied by 0 0.1 and this here so uh, and th this is a little concern right this is happens in our languages here in c plus plus in java and so on so python tries to find a way to represent the result as precisely as possible which is sometimes difficult given how computers um, have to represent numbers internally just ignore the extremal, ex, extra decimal places for now and you will learn ways to deal with this extra spaces here just here ignore ignore this here for now so so when you divide any number, um, so when you divide any two numbers, even if they are integers, that result in a whole number, and you will always get a float in mathematically, right? So let's do this. For example, four here, two, and we get two point zero here. So if you mix an integer and float in any other operations, you will get a float as well. Like for example, one plus two point zero. And we got zero, uh, three point uh, zero. Let's actually use two multiplied by nine point zero. We got eighteen point zero. And if we we this same applies for the multiplication here, uh, exponential exponents. So three mult exponent two point zero. We are seeing here nine point zero. So Python defaults to a float in any operation that uses a float. So I mean, if the output is a full number, when you are writing long numbers, you can group digits using underscores to make a large numbers more readable. For example, this: the students, and here we will use this students variable as a count of students. For example, let's make it for uh, fifteen million, right? So when you print the number uh, students print students here 
So when you print a number that was defined using underscores, Python only prints the digits. So Python ignores, ignores the underscores when storing these kinds of values, even if uh, they don't group the digits in trees. And the value here, let's actually, uh, the value here will be still an factor. So Python, for Python, the 1000 like underscore after one is the same is the same as underscore after 10 so this feature works for both integer and floats and we also have multiple assignment um, here feature in python so you can assign values to more than one one variable using just a single line of code so this helps you shorten your programs and make them easier to read and you will use this technique most often when initializing a set of numbers for example here's how you can initialize the variables a b c to zero here a b c and here zero 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 so you need to separate the variable names with commas here and do the same with the values so and python will assign each value to its respective variable as long as the number of value matches the number of variables python will match them up correctly so let's print this here uh, print a here a equals to a and print b equals b let's print the b print here and c now we will here and as you can see here a equals to zero b equals to zero and c equals to zero if we delete this we will get an here error because non iterable ink project so if you do like this for example a equals to zero b equals to 98 c equals to for example 55 and here as you can see here we assign them accordingly and we also have constants in python so a constant is a variable whose value stays same through the life of a program so python doesn't have built-in constant types but python programs programmers use all capital letters to indicate a variable should be treated as a constant and never be changed so for example um one of the constant might be for example maximum number of for example maximum value here or maximum customers for example and in this case let's make maximum customers 500 so when you want to treat a variable as a constant in your code write the name of variable in all capital letters and we also have commons in python so commons are extremely useful feature in most programming languages everything we have written in your programs so far in python code so uh, as your programs become longer and more complicated you should add notes with your programs that describe your overall approach to the problem when you're solving so a comment allows you to write notes in your spoken language within your programs so how do you write comments in python the hash mark the this hash mark oops sorry fix that so in python this hash mark indicates a comment anything following this hash mark here in your code ignored by the python interpreter here so for example let's say this right oops here hello everyone everyone this is a comment and i'm explaining explaining something about my code my code so here after that we will print um, sample print hello my uh, my students here students now we will print this and as you can see here python ignores the fifth line here and executes the second line 
what kinds of comments you should write. So the main reason to write comments is to explain what your code is supposed to do and what you are making it work. So when you are in the middle of working on a project, you understand how all of the pieces fit together. But when, when you return to a project after some time away, you will likely have forgotten some of the details. So you can always study your code for a while and figure out how segments are supposed to work, but writing a good comments can save you time by summarizing your overall approach clearly. So if you want to become a professional programmer or collaborate with other programmers, you should write meaningful comments. Today, most software is written collaboratively, whether by a group of employees at one company or a group of people working together on an open source project. Skilled programmers expect to see comments in code, so it's best to start adding descriptive comments to your programs now. So writing clear, concise comments in your code is one of the most beneficial habits you can form as a new programmer. So when you're deciding whether to write a comment, ask yourself if you had to consider several approaches before coming up with a reasonable way to make something work. So if, if so, write comment about your solution, it's much easier to delete extra comments rather than go to back and write comments for sparsely commented program. For now, I will use comments in examples through the, this course to help explain sections and codes of this course here. In the section and next, you will learn what the lists are and how to start working with the elements in a list. Lists allow you to store sets of information in one place, whether you have just a few items or millions of items. Lists are one of the Python's most powerful features, readily accessible to new programmers, and they tie together many important concepts in programming. What is a list? A list is a collection of items in particular order, and you can make a list that includes the letters of the alphabet, the digits from 0 to 9, the names of all the people in your family. You can put anything you want to into list. And uh, the items in your list don't have to be related in any particular order or way. So because a list is usually contains more than one element, it's a good idea to make the name of your list plural, such as my special instead of my special, you can write my special numbers like this or letters digits or names so in python these square braces indicate a list and individual elements in the list are separated by commas here and uh, let's create a simple example of a list that contains a few kinds of uh, car models or car makes so car uh, makes here and here we will enter for example Mercedes, oops, uh, Mercedes here, as Benz here, and we will enter the BMW, and we will enter Volkswagen, Honda, Kia here, Hyundai here, and so on. So here we will print this car mix here. And as you can see here, we have Mercedes-Benz, BMW, w, uh, Volkswagen, Honda, Kia, and Hyundai. So um, if you ask Python to print a list, Python returns this representation of the list, including the square braces here. So because this isn't the output you want to, you want your users to see, let's learn how to access the individual items in a list. List, and this is the uh, this is why we draw this drawing here and we will explain on this list here so we, we first created my special numbers here as you can see here so this associated with this here now let's uh, get the here that's it so the lists are ordered collections so you can access any elements in a list by telling the position or index of the item desired so to access an element in the list, write the name of the list followed by the index of the item enclosed in square braces. So now let's try with my special numbers here. So if we want, if we want to write my special numbers here, we will delete this. Let's actually delete this my car names. And now we will enter the print my special numbers. Let's print the number 
six to five. In order to print the six to five here, we will enter the index of the six to five three. So remember, index starts from zero here. And here, as you can see here, we printed six to five. So that's the answer you will get here. So this is the result you want to your users to see. Clean, neatly formatted output. So you can also use the strings methods in uh, this. Let's actually delete this here. And let's make the car print car makes the car makes that. Uh, you can also string use string method. For example, car makes that we will use the uppercase car makes that uh, first we will enter the for example one index one and upper here now you will see this as you can see bmw started with uppercase but uh, bmw was uppercase actually so instead of this let's try with hyundai here so zero here let's count this so this is zero zero bmw one index uh, Volkswagen 2, index index of Honda is 3, index of Kia is 4, and Hyundai is 5. That's it. So we will enter the 5 here inside the square braces, and now let's run it. And as you can see here, we've write it Hyundai in uh, upper cases. And this example produces the um uh, this output here so we can uh, and keep in mind that index positions start at zero and not one so i want to write this here because i want to uh, the new programmers can sometimes be mistaken about the index uh, position starting point here so index index oops actually let's write with text here so index position index positions start at zero uh, and not one that's it keep in mind this word here index positions start at zero and not one that's it Here. Now, a Python considers the first item in a list to be put at a position of zero and not position one. So this is a true for most programming language and languages, and the reason has to do with how the list operations are implemented at lower level. So if you are receiving an unexpected results, ask yourself if you are making a simple but common of by one error so the second item in the list has an index of one right index of one and uh, using this counting system you can get any element you want from a list by subtra subtracting one from its position in the list so for instance to access the fourth item in the list you request the item or index at zero right one so if you are so the honda is actually the fourth item in this list but in order to access them we will use three here so now we will in, let's run it this with again and here and as you can see we got honda here so python has a special syntax for accessing the last element in the list if you ask for the item at index minus one python always returns the last item in the list so here and as you can see here hyundai was the last item in our list so here let's actually do this minus one returns all uh, minus one always always returns the last item in the list here also keep in mind this so that's it oops sorry not like this minus one always returns the last item in the list that's it so this code here uh, as you can see it returned hyundai and this syntax is quite useful because you will often want to access the last items in a list without knowing exactly 
how long the list is. So this convention extends to other negative index values as well. For example, negative 2 returns the second item from the end of the list. And negative 3 returns the third item in the end of the list and so forth. So you can also use the individual values from a list. So you can use individual values from a list just as you would any other variable. For example, you can use f strings to create a message based on a value from a list. So let's try pulling uh, the first uh, our car uh, model from the list and composing a message that uses that value. So now uh, here we will do this. Print. Let's make the uh, use the we will use the f here and now my first car was uh, let's say BMW here. And we will use this braces, but uh, BMW. Uh, so car makes car makes that one because the BMW index has one, and we will use this. For example, title right, and here my first car was a BMW. The syntax for modifying an element is similar to the syntax for accessing an element in a list. To change an element, you can use the name of the list followed by the index of the element you want to change, and then provide a new value you want to that item to have. For example, let's say we have a list of uh, car makes makers, and the first item in the list is BMW, right? So let's make the car makers here, and we will create the five or three items here, so it will be easy to print on the screen. So Honda or BMW here firstly and then Honda, Honda and then uh, for example IKEA right or Ford yes Ford that's it and here we will print the car makers car makers that's it and as BMW Honda or there is nothing weird in here right we didn't change anything or manipulate anything now we will write for example this car makers from index 0 we will change bmw to jeep or dodge here and as you can see here we will firstly oh sorry we will firstly write uh, print this and as you can see here we change bmw to dodge and our new list of car makers has, doesn't have the BMW inside it. So here we define the list of car makers with uh, BMW as a first element, and then we change the value of the first item to Dodge. And the output shows the, that the first item has been changed while the rest of the list stays the same. You can change the value of any item in the list, uh, not just the first item. Just remember here, so let's uh, do the same to two here. And as you can see here, we changed port here to Dodge. And uh, you can also add an ele element to a list, and you might want to add a new element to a list for many reasons, right? For example, you might want to make a new car makers, uh, add a new data to visualizations, or add a new registered users to a website you build. So Python provides several ways to add a new data to existing lists. And the simplest way to add a new element to a list is to append the item in, in, to the list. So when you append an item to a list, the new element is added at the end of the list. And using the same list we had in a previous example, we will uh, add the new element. We will add a new element, for example, Jeep to our end of the list so our makers dot append jeep here and after that we will print the car makers and that's it and here as you can see here we add a jeep here so um, here we uh, append methods adds jeep to the end of the list without affecting any other elements in the list and uh, the append method makes it easy to build the list uh, dynamically for example you can start with an empty list and then uh, add items to the list using a series of append calls. Let's uh, do this here, for example, car, uh, car makers, makers, and here we will create the empty list here and the car makers that append BMW 
BMW, car makers that append Honda here, Honda here, e here, let's append Jeep here, oops, uh, append Jeep, and here we will also append the Ford. That's it. Also, uh, of course, we need to print it to show you. And that's it. We created list from zero. And this uh, resulting will look exactly the same as the list in the previous uh, um, examples. But we changed a little bit here because, uh, as you remember, the Jeep was at the last and Ford was firstly here. That's, that's okay. Um, here, a boolean list is why it's very common because you often won't know the data your users want to store in a program until after the program is running. So to put users in control, start defining an empty list that with, uh, will hold the user's values and then append each value, each new value provided to the list we just created. Now you can also insert an element to list. So you can add a new element at any position in your list by using the insert method. So you can do this by specifying the index of the new element and the value of the new item. So we will create a car makers to don't confuse you and car makers and we will make it the BMW or let, let's start with Honda. Well, it doesn't make any difference for now because it's valuable. So BMW, Honda and let's make it the Volkswagen, Volkswagen and jeep here let's fiat here fiat here and uh, opel opel here sab that's it that's okay that's enough here so you can add a new element to any position in your list as i said in, by using the insert method so you do this by specifying the index of the new element and the value of the new item so for example car makers here car makers dot insert so here we will insert zero so let's uh, find the new mercedes here right or let's use some japanese cars in this case lexus and here we will print the car makers now and here as you can see we changed the honda to lexus uh, but instead you remember here we didn't change the honda here Honda is still appears here, but we added Lexus here. So instead of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven items, here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight items. So we added Lexus at the start of the list. So in this example, we insert the Lexus at the beginning of, uh, beginning of the list, and the insert method opens a page at position zero and stores the value um the lexus at that location so this operation shifts every other value in the list uh by one position to the right here sorry like let's get this pen so here bmw was three here oops let's actually get my pen here and make it proper color yes so honda was zero bmw was one the volkswagen two jeep three we had four opel five and sab was six item in uh, that has six index of the list and here uh, since we added lexus here lexus now is zero honda is one bmw is two volkswagen is three jeep is four uh, fiat is five and opel is six lastly that's because we added one item at the start of the list here and we have the seven on the sub. So as I said, the uh, here uh, this operation uh, in shifts every other value in the list one position to the right. We can also remove for element from a list. So often you will want to remove an item or set of items from a list. For example, when a player shoots down an alien from the sky, you will most likely want to remove it from the list of active aliens or when a user decides to cancel their account on a web application you created and you will want to remove that user from the list of active users so you can remove an item according to its position in the list or according to its value 
Now, if you know the position of the uh, item you want to remove from a list, you can use del statement like this. So we will first print the car makers to make sure what we changed in this um, list. And we will del here car makers zero. That's it. And after that, we will print our car makers. Print car makers. And as you can see here, here we use a del statement to remove the first item, which is BMW from the list of car makers. So you can remove an item from any position in a list using the del statement if you want, if you know its index. For example, here's a, how to remove a second item, um, a second item BMW or uh, yes, here we remove the Honda here, but in this case we will remove the Let's remove the third item. Uh, in this case, we will enter the Q. And as you can see here, we removed the Volkswagen. So now the, the third item is deleted from the list. And in both examples, you can no longer access the value that was removed from the list after the del statement is used. Sometimes you will want to use the value of an item after removing it from a list. Uh, for example, you might want to get a the A and B position of an alien that was just shot down. So you can draw an explosion at that position and so on. So in a web application, you might want to remove a user from a list of active members and then add that user to a list of inactive members. So the pop method removes the last item in a list, but it lets you work with the item after removing it. The term pop comes from the thinking of the list as a stack of items and popping one item off the top of the stack. So in this analogy, the top of stack corresponds to the end of the list. So let's pop a, uh, let's uh, sap and from the list of car makers. Now we will make this, for example, this, right? So popped, popped car, car, and here we will enter the car makers dot pop here that's it and after that we will print the popped uh, first the car makers and after that we will print the popped car that's it and here we start by defining uh, uh, defining and printing the uh, our car makers and then we pop a value from the list with this here as you can see here now so let me actually adjust my mouse speed less so now let's i will explain all of this now so firstly uh, we define the list of the car models here car, car makers i'm oh, sorry car makers and then we print it so after that after that we pop a value from the list and assign that value assign that value to popped car. In this case, our popped car is equals to sap here because we popped sap here and nothing else. And after that, we are printing our car makers, which is here at the second here. And as you can see here, we don't have sap here. And after that, we are printing our popped car here which is here Zap. that's it so then we print about pop value and to prove that we still have access to that value that was removed so the output shows that uh, the value sab was removed from the end of the list and is now assigned to a variable named popped car and remember this is an old like, list this is just a variable this regular string variable so uh, how might this pub method be useful so imagine that the the car makers in the list are stored in chronological order according to when we own them right if this is the case we can use the pop method to print a statement about the last car model we bought car maker we uh, bought right so we can also use this now we will uh, since we pop the car uh, now uh, yes uh, now we will print the car maker after that we will print the popped car and we will add another print which we will use the format right as we used in previous year the last kind the last car maker 
or a car model that typhoon was typhoon owned is a or was a was a um and last so here popped car or actually it's changes here to last owned car last owned car here and pop uh last owned car that's it the output is simple sentence about the recent and uh, last uh, owned car model that we had here in this case it was sap you can use pop to remove an item from any position in a list by including the index of the item you want to remove inside the parentheses so for example let's make this here so this is the zero and we will change it to last uh, first on so here first on car and here first on car and uh, remember the firstly here we our first on car variable was sab right it's because of this uh, when we use the pop method without any parameters inside this we will get the last item and here we will enter the zero index here and as you can see here we got Honda here so remember that each time you use pop the item uh, you work with is no longer stored in the list so if you're unsure whether to use the del statement or pop method here's a simple way to decide so when you want to delete an item from a list and not use that item in any way you can use the del statement so but if you want to use an item as you remove it you can use the pop method you can also remove an item by a value so uh, sometimes you want to know the position of the value you want to remove from a list so if you only know the value of item you want to remove you can use remove method like this remove so uh, here for example say we want to remove the uh, bmw uh, from the list of um, car makers we will do this bmw here that's it and now we will enter here and as you can see none here but here we removed bmw because we cannot save this remove uh, watch here we removed and here let's actually we can delete this now and as you can see here we removed bmw so you can also use the remove method to work with the value that's being removed from a list uh, but let's remove the value of uh, the jeep and print a reason for removing it from the list so now first we are printing the raw car maker without any manipulation and after that uh, let's actually let's do too expensive here expensive and here we have jeep here and now car makers that remove remove too expensive here and print uh, print car makers and after that we will print the this some formatted text here so first we will write in jeep so in this case too expensive that title is um removed so is too expensive to expand expensive for me that's it here you can see here a jeep is too expensive for me and we removed jeep from our list after deciding the list here let's actually explain this code one by now one so after after defining the list we assign the value jeep to a variable called too expensive so when we use this uh, variable um, uh, to tell python which value to remove from the list and here let's let's actually i need my marker now to draw some things on the screen and here so here we used this value here we used this value to remove jeep here so the value jeep has been removed from the list um, here but it's it's still like accessible through the variable too expensive right so allowing us to print a statement about why we remove jeep from the list of car makers
often your lists will be created in an unpredictable order because you can't always control the order in which your users provide their data right so although this is unavoidable in most circumstances you will frequently want to present your information in a particular order sometimes you will want to preserve the original order of your list and other times you will want to change the original order so python provides a number of different ways to organize your list depending on the situations we can also sort a list permanently with a sort method now let's create a new list here let's cars um, and it's going to be bmw uh, bmw here cars bmw audi here audi here your jeep uh, jeep here again toyota and kia honda and here so python sorts method makes it relatively easy to sort a list imagine we have a list of cars uh, that we write here and we want to change the order of list to store them alphabetically to keep the task simple let's assume that all the values in the list are lowercase and here we will use the cars dot sort here and that's it and after that we will print this here and oops print cars so here the sort method changed the order of the list permanently and the cars are now in an alphabetical order and we can never revert the original order here so you can also sort this list in reverse alphabetical order by passing the argument uh, reverse reverse true here like this so uh, we pass the argument this reverse through to the sort method and now we, this will gives us a reverse order here but again it will sort our list so again the order of the list is permanently changed so um, the sorting a list is tempor uh, temporarily with a sorted function so um, the, we can also sort the list uh, with temporarily with the sorted function so let's uh, try this now so to maintain the original order of the list but present it in a sorted order you can use the sorted function the sorted function lets you display your list in particular order but it doesn't affect the actual order of the list let's try uh let's try this function on list of our cars that we created here bmw audi jeep toyota kia and honda now we will print here uh, this is our original list here and after that we will print the cars uh, and after that we will print again this is a uh, here let's let's actually use the new line so this is a sorted sorted list and after that we will print the sorted sorted cars here and after that we will print the uh, or list again this is our this is our original list that's it here now i will explain this code one by one so we first print the uh, print the list in its original order uh, here and then in alphabetical order here after the list is displayed in a new order we show that the list is still stored in its original order here sorry for that let's add the print cars here again as you can see here this these are the uh, two same original orders so after presenting it in uh, sorting it out even we can use the original owner of the list so here notice that the, uh, the list still exists in its original order and after the sorted function has been used the sorted function can also accept reverse uh, true here and the uh, argument if you want to display a list in reverse alphabetical order And sorting a list alphabetically is a bit more complicated when all the values are not in lowercase. So there are several ways to interpret capital letters when determining a sort order and uh, specify the exact order can be more 
complex than uh, we want to deal uh, with at this time however most approaches uh, to sorting will build directly on what you learned in this section to reverse the original order of list you can use this reverse methods so if we were originally stored a list of cars in chronological order according to when we own them we could easily rearrange the list into reverse chronological order like this for example let's delete here and print uh, cars firstly and after that we will cars that reverse here and after that we will print the cars again so notice that the reverse doesn't sort backward alphabetically it simply reverses the order of a list so here uh, we have honda one first year kia second toyota third jeep fourth audi fifth and bmw last year in sixth this is how reverse method works so uh, the reverse method changed the order of list permanently but you can revert the original order anytime by applying the reverse again like right <laughs> like logic here and as you can see here we apply the reverse second time and we have the original list uh, original order so um, we can find the length of a list as well so you can quickly find the length of a list by using the len uh, function so now firstly use this print print len here and after that we will enter the our list and here as you can see we have six items here one two three uh, one two three four five six items here we have six items here and you will find lane useful when you need to identify the number of aliens that still need to be shot down in a game determine the amount of data that you have to manage in visualization and or figure out uh, the number of registered users on a website among other tasks so python counts the items in a list starting with one so you shouldn't run into any off by one errors when determining the length of a list and also you, you should avoid the index errors when working with a list here so there's a one type of error that's common to see when you are working with a list for the first time so let's say you have a list uh, with three items here let's actually instead of uh, bmw audi and jeep right so you have a list of three items from w audi and jeep if you print the print let's, go, let's delete this as well if it the, the print three here this example will give uh, us an index error so python attempts to give you the item at index three but when it searches the list no item in cars has an index of three because of this uh, off by one nature of indexing in list this error is typical and people think the third item is item number three because they start counting at one but in python the third item number is two because it starts from the zero it starts from zero one and two so there's a no thing in this list such as three right so if you want to uh, reach the last item you should enter the uh, two instead of three okay that's why we got the list uh, index out of range error so an index error means python can find an item at the index you requested so if an index error occurs in your program try adjusting index you are asking for by one so then run the program again to see if the results are correct and here keep in mind that whenever you want to access the last item in a list you should use the index minus one and this will always work even if your list has changed size since the last time you accessed it so the index minus one always returns the last item in a list in this case the value is g here and the only time this approach will cause an error is when you request the last item from an empty list and as you can see here list index out of range and here uh, we have uh, no items in cars for now so python returns another 
index error if an index error occurs and you can figure out how to resolve it try printing your list or just printing the length of your lists and your list might look much different than you thought it did and especially it has been managed dynamically by your program and seeing the actual list or the exact number of items in your list can help you sort out such a logical errors so in this section you learned what lists are how to work with the individual items in a list you learned how to define a list and how to add and remove elements you learned how to sort lists permanently and temporarily for display purposes you also learned how to find the length of a list and how to avoid index errors when you are working with lists in previous section you learned how to make a simple list and you learn to work with the individual elements in a list and in this section you will learn how to loop through the, an entire list using just a few lines of code regardless of how long the list is the looping allows you to take the same action or set of actions with every item in a list as a result you will be able to work efficiently with the list of any length and including those with thousands or even millions of items so you will often want to run through all entries in a list performing the same task with each item for example in game you might want to move every element uh, on the screen by the same amount in a list of numbers you might want to perform the same statistical operation on every element or perhaps you will want to display each headline from a list of articles on a website so when you want to do the same action with every item in a list you can use python's for loop so let's say we have a list of magicians names and we want to print out each name in the list we could do this by retrieving each name from the list individually but this approach will cause several problems for uh, one it will be repetitive to do this with a long list of names also we'd have to change our code each time the list length is changed so using a for loop avoids both of these usages by letting python manage this uses internally so let's use for loop to print out each name in list of um, car models or car makers so car makers here and we will use the bmw uh, the Vo or kia here kia here ford dodge here dodge and we will also use for example bmw kia mercedes mercedes or it was yes mercedes and volkswagen and so on so now that's that's enough actually so, so zero one two three four five uh, on index and six items so we begin by defining list and now we will write our for loop so for cars or makers you can do here makers you will exp uh, understand what these makers or cars are uh, instead of you can, we, instead of using makers plural we can use one here so car in car makers and after that we will use double dot here and we will print the car that's it so now i will explain all of this code here so we begin by defining a list just the regular list just as we did in previous lectures and as you can see here it's car makers so it's instead of using red and also use another color here so we define the list of car makers and here uh, the next bit held python here and also uh, firstly we for here we have for loop look at this so this line tells the python to pull a name from the magician um, from the car makers and associate it with the variable car right so and next we tell the python to print the name which has been assigned to car here so here as you can see here we printed each of line this bmw kia ford dodge mercedes and bmw in separate print functions here so and python rep repeats these last two lines once for each name in the list it might help to read this code as for uh, for every car maker in the list of car makers print the car maker's name right 
so the output is going to be this as you uh, see here so now let's close let's take a closer look at this loop here so looping is important because it's one of the most uh, ways of most ways a computer automates repetitive tasks for example in a simple loop like we used in this uh, python here so python initially reads the first line of the loop which is for car in car makers so this tells python to retrieve the first value from the um, list car makers and associate it with the variable car right so uh this first value is here bmw and python rates the new line here and python prints the current value of the um car makers which is uh, which is bmw because the list contains more than more value so and uh, the python returns to the uh, line of the first loop so now python retrieves the next name in the list which is kia here uh, kia and associates with the value uh, with the variable magician so here we have uh, firstly in first loop here we had bmw secondly we, we, we had kia here in third loop we had ford and here python prints the current value of car uh, again which is now here right and python repeats the entire loop once more with the last value in the list uh in this case ford and then Dodge, mercedes and lastly volkswagen and after that we are ending this loop and here we printed all the loop so we are using loops for the first time keep in mind that the set of steps is repeated once for each time each item in the list so no matter how many times uh, items are in the list so if you have a million items in your list python repeats these steps a million times and usually very quickly and also keep in mind uh, when writing your own for loops that you you can choose any name you want for the temporary variable that will associate it with each value in the list you can do for example my uh, car make or so on and of course you have to print uh, change the my car make here that's it however it's helpful to choose the meaningful name that represents a single item from the list for example uh, the instead of, instead of doing doing cars uh, here writing this for cars in car makers or for dogs in dogs you can write for dog in dogs here or for cat in cats because this first item represents just a one item but here this represents the list in this case the naming conventions can help you follow the action being done on each item within a for loop using a singular and plural names can help you identify whether a section of code is working with a single element from the list or the entire list you can do just about anything with each item in a for loop let's build on previous example by printing a message to each car makers telling them that they have performed a great uh, model or let's actually tell them that uh, what their models and great car let's actually instead of uh, telling what they are let's provide just a great car right the, the only difference here we will make so i will tell you right now we will in this code we will compose a message to each car make starting with the car makes uh, car makes make right so in this uh, we will print this we will use the format again and the uh, car oops not like this here inside this format we will car make and title and this was a or great car great great car great car and after that let's print this out and as you can see here the only difference in this code is where we compose a message to each um, car model starting with the car model's name and after that we are telling our message 
So the first time through the lock, the value of uh, car make is BMW. So Python starts the first message with the name of BMW. And the second time through, the message will be the Kia here, right? So, uh, and here, as you can see here, uh, the Kia. And the third time through, the message will be Ford. Fourth time is going to be Dodge. The fifth time is going to be Mercedes. And the sixth time is going to be Volkswagen. So you can uh, also write as many lines of code as you like in the for loop. For every intended line following in the line for uh, car make and car makers is considered inside the loop. So here, this is the outside the loop. Outside the loop. But if you write the tab here, and this is inside the loop, so it will uh, loop inside here every time uh, our loop works so therefore you can do as much work as you like with each value in the list so let's add a second line to our uh, message telling each car makes that we are looking uh, to their next trick and now in order to do that we will it is use this inside here so we will print this again we will use the format and cars are great car and now we will something car here so now we will do this that bmw or mpg is high on or let's actually miles per gallon and um yes my miles per gallon is high on this car for example in this case we will use car make and now uh, now let's run it and as you can see here uh, BMW, the bmw great car um, miles per gallon is high on bmw kia great car miles per gallon is high on kia ford great car miles per gallon is high on ford and here because we indented both uh, the cars to print here each line will be executed once for every car make in the list so the new line uh, let's actually use the new line here and see how this output will change and as you can see here a new line in the second print calls insert a blank line after each pass through the loop so this creates a set of messages that are neatly grouped for each car make on the list. So now let's uh, run this list here. So this is our first iteration. So this is our first loop, second loop, second loop, third loop, fourth loop, fifth loop, and sixth loop. Six, six loops and here we our loop ends because we do not have any item anymore any item into the list and that's why our loop breaks here that's it so oops let's actually fix that and here that's it so here you can use as many lines as you like in your for loops in practice you will often find it useful to the a number of different operations with each item in a list when you use a for loop what happens once a for loop has finished executing usually you will want to summarize a block of output or move on to other work that your program must accomplish any lines of code after the for loop that are not intended are executed once without repetition so let's uh, write a thank you to group of m m group of car makers as a whole and thanking them for putting on an excellent cars so to display this group of message after all of the individual messages have been printed we place the thank you message after the for loop without the identification here so now we will write print uh, and thank you every 
car makers these cars are special and great and here now let's run this and you will see or this message is just executed once so um, the first two calls to print are repeated once for each uh, car makers in the list as you saw earlier however because the last line is not intended it's printed only once if we add indentation to it you will see as you can see here thank you every car makers thank you every car makers thank you every car makers and so on yeah, so we will delete this indentation and we will get this um, thank you message uh, only once because it's not included in this loop because of the indentation we didn't put before the print here so when you're processing data using the for loop you will find that this is a good way to summarize an operation that was performed on an entire data set for example you might want to use a for loop to initialize a game by running through the list of characters and displaying each character on the screen you might uh, then write some additional code after this loop that displays a play no button after all the characters have been drawn to the screen python uses identification to determine how a line or group of lines is related to the rest of the program in the previous in, in, the, in this examples the lines that printed messages to individual car makers were part of the for loop because they were indented so python's use of identification makes code very easy to read basically it uses white space uh, to force you to write neatly formatted code with a clear visual structure in longer python programs you will notice block of code indented at a few different levels these identations levels help you gain a general sense of the overall program's organization so as you begin to write code that relies on a proper identification you will need to watch for a few common identification errors for example people sometimes indent lines of code that don't need to be indented or forget the indented lines that need to be indented so seeing examples of these errors now will help you avoid them in the future and correct them when they do appear in your own programs so now let's examine some some of the more common identification errors so you can also forget the ident here indent uh, so um, always indent the line after the for statement in a loop if you forget python will not remind you here and as you can see here expected an indented block so here if we write for example car makers and let just split this identification and go also so the let's actually delete this and i will explain all of this so the call to print should be indented so but it's not here so when python expects an identity indented block and doesn't find one it lets you know which line it had problem with uh, and if we run this code again and let's run here and as you can see we have uh, an indentation error as line three so you can usually re resolve these kinds of annotation errors by indenting uh, the lines or lines uh, immediately after the for statement you can also forgetting forget to indent additional lines so sometimes uh, your loop will run without any errors but won't produce the expected result so this can happen when you are trying to do several tasks in a loop and you forget to indent uh, some of its lines for example this is what happens when uh, we forget to, to indent the second line in the loop and here do here we will not get any error here and now we'll if we run this and as you can see here we call a list object has no attribute title as a result the first print 
and that if we have if makers here this code will and as you can see let's car make oops car make this code will run without a problem we just edit it edit this and if we change this to car make and we will get this as, as well so here the as there is not here the first uh, print f uh, call is not indented it is indented and um, so the first that's why the first print uh, call is executed once for each uh, name in the list because it's indented but here the second print uh, call is not indented so it's executed only once after the loop has finished running because the final value associated with um, with Volkswagen here, and Volkswagen is the only one who receives the looking, uh, who, who receives the thank you every car makers. These cars are special and great, and Volkswagen only one who gets the miles per gallon is high on Volkswagen. And uh, here, this is a logical error. This syntax is valid uh, Python code, but the code does not produce the desired result because a problem occurs. It's logic so if you expect to see certain action repeated once for each item place and it's executed only once determine whether you need to simply indent a line or group of lines so here that's uh, now we are getting this error here because in for loop if you have a for loop here for now this print message will execute at once but your program firstly execute your for loop again again and again and then after completing the for loop it will go to next lines here many reasons exist to store a set of numbers for example you will need to keep track of the positions of each character in a game and you might want to keep track of players high score as well in data visualizations you will almost always work with a sets of numbers such as temperatures distances population size or altitude long to the values among other types of numerical sets the so lids are ideal for storing set of numbers and python provides a variety of tools to help you work efficiently with lists of numbers so once you understand how to use these tools effectively your code will work well uh, even when your list contains millions of items so you can also use the range function so python's range function makes it easier to generate a series of numbers for example you can use the range function to print a series of numbers like this for uh, my value my value here in range for example from 1 to 10 and here we will print the print my value and here you will see oops here yeah. and here you will see range from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 here. So although this code looks like it should print the numbers from 1 to 10, it doesn't print the number 10. In this example, range prints only the numbers uh, from 1 through 10. So I want to explain this by drawing something on the screen here like that. For example, this is range. Oops, range here for example we wanted variable 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 9 oops, 9 and 10 here we uh, when we ask range for a number uh, from 1 to 10 it will give us from here and from 1 to 9 so this is the number this code will give us here so as i said in this code the range uh, prints only numbers uh, from one through ten uh, through nine it's let's uh, run it again and here so this is the another result of the off by one behavior you will see often in programming languages and the range function causes python to start counting at the first value you give it and it stops when it reaches the second value you provide because it stops at the second value the output never contains the end value which would have been 10 in this case to print numbers uh, 1 from from 1 to 10 
you will do this just eleven write eleven and that's it here as you can see we printed values from one to ten so if your output is different from what you expect uh, when you are using range try adjusting your end value by one so you can also pass range only one argument and it will start a sequence of numbers at zero for example range uh, range six here will return the numbers from zero to six so you can also use the range to make a list of numbers so if you want to make a list of numbers you can convert the results of range directly into list using the list function so when you wrap list around the call to range function the output will be a list of numbers in this example the previous section uh, in the example of previous section we simply printed out series of numbers and we can use list to convert that same set of numbers into a list so in order to do that we will do numbers or my special numbers my special special numbers numbers equals list here and range one one six or one uh, eleven here so now we have to add uh, here and we will add after that we will print the my special numbers that's it here uh, you can see the one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so we can also use the range function to tell python the skip numbers in a given range if you pass a third argument to range here uh, python uses that value as a step size when generating numbers for example here's how i list uh, the even even numbers uh, between 1 and 10 we will do uh, here 2 and we will do 2 here again uh, and here and as you can see here 2 4 6 8 and 10 so in this example the range function starts with the value 2 and then adds 2 to that value it adds repeatedly until it reaches or passes the end value 11. I want to also illustrate this on screen here. So here we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, oops, 7, 8, 9, 10 here. So here, what you see is so here we will we are saying that we will start from 2 and end for from 10 11 but this means 10 here as you uh, as we explained here so we will start from the 2 here so we will start first from this 2 4 because as you can see here we are passing 2 in each number and then we here we come here and here we go to 6 and here we come here and here we go to 8 and here we are and then we are going to 10 and this is where our range ends so you can create almost any sets of numbers or you want to use the so you can also create you can create the almost any sets of numbers you want to using uh, the range function so for example consider how might uh, make a list of the first 10 square numbers that is the square of each integer from 1 through 10 in python uh, which is two asterisks like that so let's actually close this so now here, here's how you might put the first 10 square numbers onto a list so here we have a uh, my special or my squares here squares and here we will create the empty list now we will use the for loop my my value here in range and here we will start from 1 to 11 and here we will use the my squares here equals my value asterisk to add dual asterisk here and 2 and here we will use my my squares here that append append or 
uh, my value here my uh, here my squares that append or my my square here and it will change it my square equals my value of asterisk two and here the value was my squares that append the my square and that's it and after that of course we will need to print the squares here squares here but outside the for loop as you can see here we are printing outside the for loop squares here for my square yeah that's it now let's run it and as you can see here 1, 4, 9, uh, 16, 25, 38, 49, 64, 81, and 100. So we start with an empty list called squares. Here. Actually, let me here. So here we start with the empty list called my squares. Here, let's actually use that marker. So here we start with the empty list called my squares. Then we tell Python to loop root each value loop through each value from 1 to 10 in this case if we write, uh, write 11 using the range function so inside the loop the current value is raised to the second power and assigned to the variable uh, my square here each new value of square is then appended to my square list here as you can see here we are using append here so this works like that for example this is our my squares here and here we added and then another loop comes we added another value and then another look loop comes we added another value inside it and until the 10 times here so that's it and finally when the loop has finished running the list of squares is printed on the screen in previous lectures you learned how to access a single element in a list and in this uh, section you've been learning um, how to work through the other elements in a list so you can also work with a specific group of items in a list called a slice in python so to make a slice you specify the index of the first and last elements you want to work with as the, with the range function python stops one item before the second index you specify the output of the first three elements in a list you will request uh, here indicates truth zero two three here so uh, now if we write uh, zero three three zero two three here we will get this here and this is our slice so here I will create some examples here. So let's again make some example about car makers, uh, or let, let's uh, sometime now. Yeah, yeah, car makers is okay. Uh, car makers here we will add BMW, uh, Honda here. We will add Volkswagen. We will add the Ford, Hyundai, Kia and nissan here so here we will print print the uh, zero three so print car makers car makers zero three here so this code now uh let this code prints a slice of the list so the output retains the structure of a list and includes the first three car makers in the uh, list here so in this case it's gonna print us here it's gonna print us bmw honda oops, bmw honda and volkswagen so it will print us these three items signs we write in zero and three here so now let's print this and as you can see here bmw honda volkswagen so you can generate any uh, subset of a list and uh, for example uh, if you want to uh, if you want to 
uh, if you want to s second and uh, second, third, and fourth item in a list, you will do this. Here, as you can see here, we started Honda, Volkswagen, and Ford. And uh, this time, uh, the slide start with, start with uh, Honda here and ends with the Ford. So if you omit the first index in the slides, Python automatically starts your slides at the beginning of the list, like this here. You just need to add this double dot here. And as you can see here, we got BMW, Honda, Volkswagen, and Ford here. So, uh, so a similar syntax works if you want to slice that includes the end of a list. So, for example, if you want to um, all items from the third item through the last item, you can do this two double dot. But uh, this double dot here will after, will will come after the number to get the uh, last item. So here get from the last item. Now, in this case, we will get as we can see here it's actually where is my marker yes so here we got nissan kia hyundai ford volkswagen and that's it we got from here to here so it we got two here we counted zero one second and from second we told python that get all those items from the last so uh, python returns all the items from the third item uh, through the end of the list Volkswagen, ford hyundai kia nissan so this syntax allows you to output all the elements from any point in your list to the end regardless of the length of the list or something so recall the that uh, negative index returns an element a certain distance from the end of a list therefore you can output any slides of the end of a list for example if you want to output the last three car makers on the car makers we can use uh, this slice uh, like this here minus three negative three here and this double dot here and after that We will print this. And as you can see here, we printed Hyundai, Kia, Nissan here. So you can include, include the third value in the braces, indicating a slice. So if a third value is included, this tells Python how, how many items to skip between items uh, in the specified range. So you can use a slice in a for loop if you want to loop through the subset of the elements in a list. So in this example, we will loop through the first three car makers and print their names as a part of a simple car maker. Now uh, we will print here, uh, here, here are the first, first four, four car makers in my list here and after that we will use for loop for car maker car maker in car makers and here we will enter this here for and after that we will play uh, print here we will print the car maker dot title so here we will Let's run this, and as you can see here, we got this example. We got this output. So instead of looping through the entire list of players or car makers, Python loops through only the first three, uh, first four car makers. So slices are very useful in a number of situations. For instance, when you are creating a game, you could add a player, uh, you could add a uh, car makers model to a list uh, every time that. Uh, that car is running or playing uh, the player is playing with that car so you could uh, then get a player's top uh, three uh, scores by sorting the list in decreasing order and taking a slice that includes uh, just the first three scores
often you will want to start with an existing list and make an entirely new list based on the first one. So let's explore how copying a list works and examine one situation in which copying a list is useful. So to copy a list, you can make a slice that includes the entire original list by omitting the first index and the second index like this, right? So this tells Python to make a slice that starts at the first item and ends with the last item, producing a copy of the entire list. For example, imagine we have a list of four um, of a list of our favorite car makers and want to make a separate list of car makers that our uh, friend drives. So this friend likes everything in our list and drives everything on our list so far. So we can create their list by copying ours. So in order to do that, uh, you will write friends friend that friend that likes cars and here we will use this and let's actually my my favorite car cars and here friends favorite car and here now we will use this my favorite cars and this and after that we will uh, firstly print this friends favorite cars and after that uh, so uh, firstly of course uh, this is the uh, friend's favorite cars and this is my favorite cars and after that we first we will first print the my favorite cars so print uh, my favorite cars are like this and after that we will print our my favorite cars and after that we will print of course we need to add a new line before it uh, so my friends favorite cars are here and after that we will print friends friends favorite cars and here we will run this now and as you can see this is our output so i added this uh, new line here oops sorry again it's not work or yes it's working now okay so here i added this new line character to this to show our output new line here so i could be added uh, this new line after the uh, my favorite cars here but it's more easy to add here instead of writing some formatting and things in uh, last my favorite cars print function so first we make a list of uh, car makers we we like called our uh, favorite car makers uh, called my favorite cars then we make a new list called um, friends friends uh, favorite cars and we make a copy of my favorite cars by asking for a slice of my uh, favorite cars without specifying an indicator like this here and assign the copy of my favorite cars uh, to friends favorite cars so when uh, and when we print each list we see that they both contain the same cars so to prove that we actually have two separate lists we will add a new uh, we will add a new favor a new car to each list and show that we that each list keeps track of the appropriate person's favorite car so in order to do that we will do uh, after my favorite cars here we will do my my favorite cars that append here let's add new car maker name in this case toyota right so toyota oops toyota here and after that we will also add friends favorite cars and we will append the <laughs> let's add fiat right and here we will not change this print functions 
and now we will run our code and see what will change here and as you can see here so we copy the original items in my favorite cars to the new list uh, called friends favorite cars as we did in the previous example and next we add a new favorite new car uh, maker to each list and we add toyota to my favorite cars and we add fiat to friends favorite cars and when uh, and we then print the two lists to see whether they uh, whether each of these favorite cars in the is in the appropriate list so here the output shows that our toyota is appears in our list of favorite cars but fiat here fiat does not so we can see that fiat now appears in our friends uh, list uh, but toyota doesn't right if we had a simply said friend uh, favorite friends favorite cars equal to my favorite cars we will not produce two separate lists for example here's uh, what happens when you try to copy a list without using a slice Oops. without using a slice and as you can see here we both have fiat so instead of assigning a copy of my foods to my uh, my, my favorite cars to my friends favorite cars we set a friends favorite cars equal to my favorite cars so this syntax actually tells python to associate the new variable to my favorite cars with a list that is already associated with um, my favorite cars so uh, now my favorite cars it will also appear in friends favorite cars and so on so likewise the uh, Toyota will appear in both lists, uh, even though, or uh, Fiat will appear bo in both lists, even though it appears to be added only to my favorite cars. And as you can see here, Toyota and Fiat appears in the same uh, list. So the output shows that the both lists are the same now, which is not we wanted here. And uh, don't worry about the details in this example for now. If you are trying to work with the with, with a copy of the list and you see an expected behavior, make sure you are copying the list using a slice as we did in this uh, in the first example here. Lists work well for storing collections of items that can change through the, the list of a program. So the ability to modify lists is particularly important when you are working with a list of users on a website or a list of characters in a game. So however, sometimes you will want to create a list of items that cannot change so tapas allows you to do just that so python refers to values that cannot change as immutable and immutable list is called tuple so a tuple is uh, just like a list except you use parentheses instead of a square braces once you define a tuple you can access individual elements by using each item's index just as you would for a list for example, if we have a rectangle that should always be a certain size, we can ensure that it is uh, its size doesn't change by putting the dimensions into a tuple. Uh, so my dimensions here, we will add 250 here and 100 here. And here we will print first, uh, we will print dimension 1, and then we will print, uh, oops, not of course we need to get a variable name so my dimensions uh, one here and here as you can see here we define the tuple dimensions using the parentheses instead of a square braces like we did in the list so then we print each element in the tuple individually using the same syntax we have been using to access elements in a list and as you can see here we first printed two two hundred fifty and uh, two uh, hundred after that so uh, this so and actually let's see what happens if we try to change the items or change one of the items in the in the type in the tuple dimensions now here we will write uh, my dimension actually let's make name it my tuple right so it will more ex explanatory my tuple dimensions and here we will use the my tuple dimensions equal uh, zero make it let's make zero to 150 here and after that print this uh, my tuple dimensions zero and after that print my tuple dimensions one 
And here, so this is the error we got here. Actually, let's delete this for now. So this code tries to change the value of the first dimension, but Python returns a type error because we are trying to alter a tuple which can't be done to that type of object. And Python tells us uh, we can't as assign a new value to an item in a tuple here. As you can see here, tuple object does not support item assignment. So this is beneficial because we want to Python raise an error when a line of code tries to change the dimensions of the rectangle. And tuples are technically defined by the presence of a comma. So the parentheses make them look neater and more readable. So if you want to define a tuple with one element, you need to include trailing comma here. So if you want to define a tuple just one element, you need to include this trailing comma. Yeah, so it doesn't may often make sense to build a tuple with one element, but this can happen when tuples are generated automatically. So you can also loop through all values in a tuple, so you can loop uh, over all the values in a tuple using just a for loop, just we did in previous lectures with lists. So here, now we will add new tuple. So my tuple or my car models models my favorite favorite car models that i will like forever and this is not the best name for that but uh, i've just general explanatory purposes and here we will add tuples that for example i like bmws i like uh, the Mer here for example i like volkswagen but the sport sporty ones here i like ports here so that's it Ford. And here we will loop through all the tuples in this list. So for so remember, this is not a list. This is actually let me here here. So do you remember, keep in mind that this is not a list. This is tuple. This is tuple here. So here we will loop through all the items in this list. So for uh, my my fave car uh, and here. We will do in my favorite car models that I will like forever. And here we will print here my, my fave car. And let's print this. And here, as you can see here, we loop through all the elements here. So Python returns all the elements in a tuple, just as it would for a list. So uh, although you can modify a tuple, so that's it how it uh, how this works here. So although you can't uh, modify a tuple, you can assign a new value to a variable that represents a tuple. For example, if you wanted to change the dimensions of a previously created rectangle dimensions here, for example, 250, 250 and 100, and we will print the original dimensions uh, here original dimensions dimensions here and after that we will uh, create a for loop a dimension uh, dimension in dimensions and after that we will print here uh, we will print the dimension print the dimension dimension and here we will after that we will do Again, dimensions, we will change the dimensions here. Dimensions and equals, for example, 500 and 200, right? And after that, we will print uh, this new line modified dimensions, modified dimensions. And here we will create a new for loop. Actually, let's use double dots here, make it look nicer, right? So for dimensions, uh, dimension dimension in dimensions and here we will print dimension again that's it and here we will let's run it that's it and here this is uh, our output so the first four lines defines the original tuple and print the initial uh, dimensions and we then associate a new tuple with the new variable dimensions um, and print a new value. And Python doesn't raise any error this time because reassigning a variable is valid. 
So when compared with list tuples are simple data structures and use them when you want to store a set of values that should not be changed throughout the life of a program. Conditional programming or branching is something you do every day, every moment. It's about evaluating conditions. If the light is red, then I can cross. If I'm hungry, I need to eat. And if I am late for work, then I will call my boss. And the main tool is the if statement, which comes in different forms and colors. But its basic function is to evaluate an expression and based on the result, choose which part of the code to execute. As usual, let's uh, look at uh, this example here. So if, if I am, um, M is late here and true here, true. And after that we will, if uh, is late is true, then print, I need, I need to get, I need to call my boss. And uh, this is possible the simplest example. So when uh, fed to if statement, the is late acts as a conditional expression, which is evaluated in a Boolean context. And remember that is late here, this is late variable here is Boolean not a uh, string, not value, tuple, or anything. It, it is a boolean. It's another primitive type. Boolean. You will learn about that in next lectures also. So, uh, so boolean also can... Boolean has two values, either false or true. So, if the result of the evaluation is true, then we enter the body of the code immediately after the if statement. Notice that the print instruction is indented, which means that it belongs to scope uh, defined by the if here. And as you can see, this is indentation here. So uh, if we run this code, as you can see, I need to call my bus. If we make it is late false, so we are not late for now. And as you can see, we didn't evaluate anything. So this code is didn't work or didn't need it to work. You know. So depending on the result of evaluating the late uh, is late expression, we can either enter block one or block two, but not both. So block one is executed when late evaluates to true, while block two here is executed when the late evaluates to false. So trying assigning uh, false and true to this is late to to see how the output of uh, this code changes accordingly. So in this example, also introduced uh, the S class in the uh, switch becomes very handy uh, when we want to provide an alternative set of instructions to be executed when an expression evaluates to false within an if class. So the S class is optional as is evident by comparing preceding two examples. And in, uh, with these examples, we will do in next lecture. So I'm waiting you in next lecture. Often you will want to take one action when a conditional test passes and different action in all other cases. Python's if else syntax makes this passable. The if else block is similar to a simple if statement, but the else statement allows you to define an action or set of actions that are executed and run when the conditional test fails. As when the if test fails and in this case we will execute else so we will display uh, some message here now let's let's write something that for example we have a car uh, car here and of actually let's draw a car here and we don't this we don't want this car to uh, for example, older than 10 years, right? So, so let's make this 10 years. So we want this car to less than 10 years. So we will want a new car, right? 
and that's why we're gonna do here that let's make for example car model car model here it's going in this case let's make it bmw and car year in this case let's make it Mm, 2015 and here we will add if our car model so car year minus 2023 in this case of course uh, today's year is 2023 and actually let's delete this for now also delete this and now Car year minus 2023 is so our car year, for example, in this case, uh, our car year is going to be 8, while 8 is less than 10, then it will evaluate 3, right? So in this case, print uh, your car is. And we will also use format here. Format your your car is uh, car year the minus twenty two thousand twenty three years old, and it's almost new, right? And here we will also add else statement if our car is has age of more than ten. We will write this here else print sorry i don't want or uh, sorry our company doesn't buys cars buy cars that more uh, that age is more than 10 and after i will print and again and your your cars your car age is of course you need to add f here format car year car year minus 2023 your car or let's actually instead of car we can also write bmw right so or car model car model is years old and it's almost new and we can buy it and here uh, in else sorry our company doesn't buy uh bmw let's actually add another uh, format here so we will add f here and format car model that age is more than 10 and car year here now let's run this and as you can see here your bmw oops actually we need to do this opposite here sorry for this we got uh, right numbers but we got negative here so we need to do this we need to subtract our car year from 2023 let's do the same here and now your bmw is eight years old and it's almost new we can buy it but in else here uh, else command here is didn't execute it because if here evaluated true if we make our car year for example 2005 then it will give your bmw is 18 years old and it almost no ops car year of course we need to change it again 2023 minus car year and here we will get else here sorry our company doesn't buy that by bmw that age is more than 10 and your car age is 18 so in first example actually let's try again 2015 so in this example our if uh, conditional test passes and the first block of this print here call is executed so if the test evaluates to false then the else block is executed for example 2005 and in this case our false will not be executed because it is here because it is false right 
So it will not execute. Instead, our else command here will execute here. So this code works because it has only two possible situations to evaluate. Uh, a car is either old enough uh, or not, right? So the if else structures works well in uh, situations in which you want Python to always execute one of uh, possible situations or the actions. So in a simple if else chain like this, one of two actions will always be executed no matter if our car year is 1000 or some here as you can see here sorry our company isn't by bmw that aj is more than 10. programming often involves examining a set of conditions and deciding which action to take based on these conditions python's if statement allows you to examine the current state of a program and respond appropriately to that state in this section you will learn to write conditional tests which allow you to check any condition of interest and you will learn to write simple if statements and you will learn how to create a more complex series of if statements to identify when the exact conditions you want are present and you will then apply this concept to lists and so you will be able to write a for loop that handles most items in a list uh, one way but handles certain items in a with specific values in different way so uh, this example here we will show the if uh, tests uh, that let you uh, respond to special situations correctly imagine you have a list of cars uh, and you want to print out the name of each car so car names are proper names so the names of most cars should be printed in title names title case however the value bmw here should be printed in all uppercase and uh, here we will which we will do that right now so we will car makers car makers here and after that we will equal to so for, first we will enter the volkswagen the bmw the toyota Toyota Ford and G and here we will use the for car in car makers and here so if uh, car equals to BMW then we will print the car dot upper and else oops, here we will else we will print the car the title that's it so now let's run it that's it here oops uh, if bmw oops if bmw that's it now this will work here so now the loop in this example first checks if the current value of a car if the current value of a car is bmw if it is the value is printed in uppercase here with this function right if the value of a car is anything other than a bmw it is printed in a title case and here this is our output here uh, all of these names are written in title case but here bmw is written in uppercase so this example combines a number of concepts you will learn about in this section. Let's begin by looking at the kinds of tests you can use to examine the conditions in your program. So we can also use conditional tests in uh, Python. So at the heart of every if statement is an expression that can be evaluated as true, as true, or false, right? So, uh, Python uses the values uh, true and false to decide to decide whether the code is um, in an if statement should be executed or not. So, if a conditional test evaluates true, then Python executes the code following the if statement. So, if the test evaluates false, uh, Python ignores the code following the if statement Le we can also check for equality so the most conditional tests compare the current value of a variable the specific value of interest so uh, the simplest conditional test uh, che test checks 
whether the value of a variable is equal to the value of an interest. In order to do that, we will just delete for now uh, the, our for loop and we will print here. Now, car equals BMW here. Or let's actually, instead of writing that, let's use car makers. BMW's index is one. BMW and BMW here. So now, as you can see, we got an error cannot assign to a function call so here that is we're gonna get an error if you try to do that however if you try this in python console uh, which we will now here we opened our python now you can reach this by using just uh, python and here you're gonna see this python 64 bit or 32 bit you just enter that and here you can see the new tab opened here, let's actually make it closer so most conditional tests are to compare the current value of a variable to a specific value of interest let's create a new value named car here and make it bmw and after that we will check the is car equal to bmw and here you can you can see we got true so the first line here actually let me get this so this first line let me fix this now nah, here this first line here sets the value of a car car sets the value of a car to b uh, actual b m w using a single equal sign so here we used the single equal sign here right as you've seen many times already this sign so the next line checks the whether the value of a cars is BMW here. You see here? Oops, actually, let's use different color here. So now we are checking this by using a double equal sign. Double equal sign. Here, car yes b m w so this is a equality operator so and um, so this equality operator here this is this is name equality operator let me actually write that here this is equality operator so here this equality operator returns true like in this case if the values on the left and the right side of the operator match in this case these are matched so car is actually equals to bmw actually let me use the different color so here our car is equals to bmw here because we already signed that in first line and our bmw here equals to bmw right so we are checking this bmw w and here they match in this case they will return true that's it but uh, here the values in this example match uh, match so python returns true so when the value of a car is anything other than a bmw for example let's try car equal equal uh, the jeep here we will get false if car equal equal uh, uppercase b mw we will get false again because these equation 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 <laughs> equality operator are case sensitive in strings so here we if we try something uh ice cream ice cream we will get false again so that's it here uh, with operator so a single equal sign is really a statement and you might read the first line of a code here uh that we are setting um set the value of a car equal to for example jeep on the other hand a double equal sign ask, asks a question 
let me actually write that down uh, some new programmers might confuse this with equate uh, initialization here so this this double equal uh, double equal signs asks the or asks here asks this let me get this text here this asks this so is the value of car equal to bmw so here our w equality double equal sign asks uh, whether a value of uh, this value of a car a car in this case in is variable right because we use this car as a variable name and here is the value of car equal to bmw in this case it's equal so it will return true in this lecture you will learn how to write functions which are named blocks of code designed to do one specific job so when you want to perform a particular task that you have defined in a function you call that function responsible for it so if you need to perform that task multiple times through your program you do not need to type all the code for the same task again and again you just call the function dedicated handling that call tasks and uh, call tells python to run the code inside the function so you will find that using function makes your program easier to write read test and fix so let's uh, first uh, design a function now so now we will uh def here read read play phone here and after that uh we will write this here print print here hello play phone right or hello students here and here after that we will just call that function in this case uh greet greet typhoon here and as you can see here we wrote hello students here and the best thing with functions is you can call that function how many times you want here so for example let's write this here uh, six get great typhoon here and as you can see we got one two three six hello students message here so this example shows the simplest structure of a function the first line is actually i want to draw here so it will be help you to visualize things here so that's it so here the first line uses the keyword Dev here to inform Python that you are defining a function. So here, this is the function definition, which tells Python the name of the function. Here, the name of this is the name of the function here, which we are telling Grid Typhoon. And if applicable, what kind of information the function needs to do its job so in this case we are gonna add this uh, parameters inside this parenthesis here which you will learn uh, right here so and also the parenthesis holds that information in this case the name of the function is breed typhoon and in it needs no information and uh, to do this to do his job right so its parentheses are empty here empty here empty empty here for now so even so parentheses are required so if you want to define the function whether it's empty or not you need that parentheses here so it's a basic syntax so finally the definition ends with this colon here the definition ends with this colon here right so any intended lines here any indented indent, indent lines that follow create typhoon makes up the body of the function so here we, this is the body of our function here let me actually take this here so here body 
of function. So uh, the text on the second line here, the text on the second line is uh, here, the print, right? So here, this um, it look actually here as you can see this is the hello student but we can also get that parameter from something for example this in this case it's name right and here we could do for example hello wherever the parameter we entered and then name which you will learn in this in uh, this section of our course here and the line print hello students is the only line of code in the body of this function so the grid typhoon has just a one job which is print hello students right print hello students so when you want to use this function you have to call it a function call tells python to execute code in the function so the call to call a function you write the name of the function here followed by any necessary information in parentheses so because uh, in our grid typhoon function there's no information needed here calling our function is as simple as entering grid typhoon here and when we enter this as expected we wrote, we write our outputs here which is hello students if you modify the function grid typhoon slightly it can greet the user by name for the function to do this you enter username in the parentheses of the function definition at here def read the phone here so by adding for example user name here you allow the function to accept any value of username you specify so the function now expects you to provide a value for username each time you call it so here let's run this code and here we got an error because grid typhoon missing one required positional argument which is username right so in order to do uh, get rid of the error we need to give some uh, give some value in it right so for example let's make it one of our student name for example alex here alex and here we got no error but uh, here the alex variable here has no use state so we, we got to get rid of the error but we are not using alex here so in order to do that we will write a print function again so print f hello here print we're gonna use format hello dear student and after that we will use username that upper here for example so we will write alex name uppercase and after that we will add this ternary here that's it let's run this and here hello dear student alex so entering greet the phone alex here actually let me get this so entering greet the phone alex calls greet the phone and gives the function the information it needs to execute print call so the function accepts the name you passed it and displays the uh, greeting for the name so let's actually draw this on the screen how this is works on diagram so here we are getting the name some username right so in this case let's call this a username and after that whenever some function or some function call uses it here the alex actually goes to here right so actually let me delete that here we will write this again so here this alex we are giving this alex to this username right and after that this username goes to this print here which are which we are printing username that upper so whenever we call this uh, typhoon here first we pass this value to great typhoon and then great typhoon uses this value inside the print statement right so in order now uh, when we enter the great typhoon uh, at the first here 
Alex was like this. Alex here. And here, the username here. This is the sixth line. But no, fifth line here. And after that, we are giving to first line. So in first line, Alex is again like this. But here we are printing Alex here. In the second line, we are printing Alex, but with uppercase. Actually, we didn't change it uh, here. Alex here. And as you can see here, we've written it in uppercase here. So actually, we, uh, as you know from previous lectures, we didn't change this Alex variable permanently. So if we use that without, again without the upper method of strings, we will get the Alex that we wrote here. So likewise, uh, entering the, for example, let me actually greet, greet here, uh, and one of our students' name, for example, Murtaza, Murtaza here. And when we try this, we will get same, but with Murtaza here. So again, after using Alex here, so this is our first call, first call, we are calling Murtaza, which is applies the same. Let me actually use the different color here. So we are calling Murtaza. This Murtaza gives the username. The username gets to username here. And after the bot here uses the upper method to make it print the uppercase here. So if we, uh, if we do, for example, read the phone here, Nikat here, and this will do the same no matter what here nikad is gonna go here again nikad is gonna go here again to username and username will go to this print function so you can do this how much you want uh, whenever you want here and here um, in this quote here uh, the grid typhoon function we defined the grid typhoon to require a value to uh, for the variable username right so once we call the function and gave it the information for example a person's or student's name uh, it printed the right greeting so the variable username in the definition of grid user is an example grid typhoon here is an example of parameter so this username as we said this is a parameter right so for example we can give as i said we can give it, uh, give it uh, whatever value we want we can even give it an integer here integers here let me let's try this and as you can see here we got error because the upper method it doesn't exist on integer here so and as you can see here if, when we deleted the upper we get rid of an error we even printed the numbers which you will learn how to uh, find that and fix that in next lectures because a function definition can have multiple parameters a function column may need multiple arguments so you can pass arguments to your functions in a number of ways so you can use positional arguments which need to be in the same order the parameters were written keyboard arguments where each argument consists of variable name and the value and list and dic dictionaries of values so let's look at each of these in turn so let's start with the positional argument so when you call a function python must match each argument in the function call but the parameter in the function definition so the simplest way to do this is based on the order of the arguments provided so the values matched up this way are called positional arguments to see how this works let's create a, some code that displays information about courses and the function tells us what kind of course so course category is and the course name so here we will define uh describe or get yeah, course here print course here and we will and actually instead of writing this yeah uh output or display yes display course here we will enter course here so as a first parameter we're going to use the course category or course topic it, it's going to more here so course topic and after that we will use comma here and course name that's it 
and after that we will use double uh, dot here and here we will use uh, the comments which is display information about course here and after that we will print using the format so print here f and new line of course after that so the course name course name actually instead of let's add another variable parameter and named course duration or yeah course course hours yeah course course hours here so first we will enter the course topic and after that we will enter the course topic name course topic and again we will print uh, the again format and after that we will enter the sorry yes here and after that we will enter the course name course name here and now we will enter course name again and after that we will again add a new last print function in this case it's course hours hours here oops course hours and after that we will again add the course hours here that's it and after that for example we will enter uh, the um, display course display course uh, here and course topic for example python um with nikat here and course name the course topic is course uh, here we, uh, we will in course name learn python in short learn python fast and hard way hard way by nikhat here and after that we will add another here course hours which is three hours or actually instead of writing this let's make course hours integer here and we will change this course hours and hours here that's it so we are taking two strings and one integer that's it now let's explain this code here so the definition shows this function needs a type of um, course uh, so when we call the display course we need to provide an course topic and course name and course hours right in that order so firstly we need to enter the course topic here according to this oops here course actually instead of writing this so firstly we are entering the course topic and then this is our course name and after that we are entering the course hours right so for example in this function called the argument python is assigned to course topic and in the function body these two param uh, these three parameters are used to display information about the course uh, and we are describing the course here now uh, what we're going to do is here for example firstly we are entering the course topic we are which we are getting from here and then we are entering the course name which we are getting from the second parameter and writing this and then we are getting the course hours which is an integer type and here we are adding course hours here now let's uh, try the output here let's see what we are what this is going to show here so actually let's add two spaces to match these up and as you can see here course topic is python course name is learn python fast and hard way by nihat here and course hours is three hours here so here as you can see here we are first adding the tree here and then we are adding ours as additional format here that's it so we can also add another uh, variables or functions as well so let's call another here display course uh, car coolant or actually let's use the 
Python or R programming here and learn R programming. Oops, of course, it's going to be a string. Learn R programming, or actually, let's make a different name R programming master class, master class by Nikat here. The course hours is going to be, for example, 10 hours. And after that, we are going to show this again. And as you can see here, we got this output here, course topic in Python here. We are firstly printing Python, and then we are printing the uh, our programming, course topic, our programming, course name, our programming, masterclass by Nihad, and course hours is 10 hours. And as you can see, this is the how we shorted our course here uh, with just adding a function uh, into our code here. A keyword argument is a name value pair that you pass to your function. So you directly associate the name and the value within the argument. So when you pass the argument to the function, there's a new confusion and you won't end up with the, for example, course topic named course hours, right? So keyword arguments free you from having to worry about correctly ordering your arguments in the function call. And uh, they clarify the role of each value in the function call. So now let's uh, rewrite our program using uh, this keyword arguments to call for example uh, for, to call display course here now uh, what we're going to do is course hours here as you can see here and course uh, here and now we can also when we call display course right so we will also mix these up here right so now we're going to use course hours or course hours here is going to be five for example and course name or course topic we can also use course name but this is just an explanatory uh, here course topic is going to be python python and the course name is going to be mastering ma mastering python and here this is what and as you can see here we got the same result but we mixed up the orders so here the function uh, display course hasn't changed but uh, when we call the function we explicitly tell python which parameter each argument should be matched with so when python reads the function call it knows to assign the argument course topic to uh so it, it knows to assign the variable core uh, python to course topic so mastering python to course name so however if uh, we our order is changed here so course ours goes to here our course topic goes to here and mastering python uh so which is course name goes to here so this is mixed up but however we get the same result uh with the with the keyword arguments in python so the order of keyword um, arguments uh, doesn't matter because python knows where each value should go and uh, here uh, in the first here we use we in the second uh, display course call here we used the standard function call but here we are using the display course uh, which is keyword argument calling so as i said it's more clear way to call uh, call functions here so we also have a default values in functions so when writing a function you can define a default value for each parameter so if an argument for parameter is provided in the function call python uses the argument value so if not it uses the parameters default value so when you define a default value for a parameter you can exclude the corresponding argument you'd usually write in the function call so using default values you can simplify your function calls and clarify the ways your functions are typically used for example if you notice that the most of the calls of this display course are being used uh, to describe courses so um, you can set the default value of the course type to just the uh, online course and now anyone calling the uh, display course uh, for a 
course online course can omit uh, that information uh, and here we what we're gonna do here is uh, let's actually delete these lines so here so course topic is gonna be uh, just an online course online course here so I'm sorry and here we got an error and no default parameter follows default here the no parameter follows default parameter so here we got an error because we here we are if we are providing this we need to also provide the default parameter for all of this course name unknown and course hours zero here for example and that's because we got a read of an error now here we got uh, no problem showing this because we already provided this information for our function but if we enter some values for example if we display course we just know that this course um, name we will do this so course name course name here uh, java course here and after that uh, we will not get an error because we already defined this if uh, the default values for this and here uh, now let's run it here actually we did run it and here course topic is online course we all all we are added just a java course here and the course hours is zero hours because we didn't provide it and course topic is online course here and as you can see here we did this here so course hours is zero course name is unknown but when we enter the java course is this unknown here actually uh, emitted here and we entered the java course here and we also we didn't change the or enter the course topic here and that's why we got the default value which is online course so also the order of parameters in the function definition had to be changed because the default values makes it unnecessary to specify a type of course uh, as an course course topic as an argument the only argument left in the function call is the course name here so when we enter just a java course here we will not get an error here but uh, and as you can see here we enter the course topic as java course but course name is unknown so i hope you understand it how this works and how you should use default uh, default values in python here a function doesn't always have to display its output directly instead it can process some data and then return a value or set of values so the value that the function returns is called return value so return statement takes a value from inside the function and sends it back to the line that called the function so return values allow you to move your much of your program's grant work into functions which can simplify the body of your program so we will uh, create a simple function that makes takes the uh, model and make and year and returns a neatly formatted full car information right so here we will define get formatted uh, car info here actually if the the function names can be descriptive but uh, i think this is a very long name uh, which you can also shorten it for example get car info it's better now right and here we will get three parameters the car maker car maker car model and car year right so car year that's it and here we will add another comment to return a full full car info here and after that we will create a car info here and we will enter the format of course as we always do and first we're gonna enter car maker car maker but we will write car maker in uppercase upper here and after that we will use the car model 
with caramel we will use uh, let's use the title is okay for car model and now we will enter the year so we can also get the integer uh car year but we can also get the string way uh, so yeah i think it's gonna be better if we take car year as a string uh, as an integer sorry not a string and now we will just print the car model so here oops we did, we did, we did some error here actually and after that uh, we will enter car make a uh, car model dot title and after that we are entering we will enter the car year so and here your car model or car info here and uppercase and we will enter new lines every time we start this line and after that return return the car info that's it and here yeah return the car info we can't have a parenthesis here because this is the variable and not function here car info is not function this is variable we created variable from these parameters and here we will uh let's make it bmw here and we will use the get car info first we're gonna enter the car maker let's uh, make it bmw and car model 528 of uh, we will enter it in strings 528 e here uh, which e means here is injection it's a gasoline here in most of my car manufacturers and we're gonna enter also car year for example and, uh, 2016 and now we will print the bmw that's it and here as you can see your car info bmw 528e and the year is 2016 so we can also use for example in volvo volvo uh, so my volvo here volvo here and get car info volvo 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 s40 or yeah s40 is okay and uh, 2008 here we can also add another bmw car bmw or let's add volkswagen now volkswagen car here get car info and volkswagen and golf golf 7 and the year is 2014 that's it and here as you can see here oops of course we need to print use again print my volvo here my volvo and of course let's actually use this with formatting my volvo uh, is best here and after that we will enter the my volvo variable and print volkswagen car uh, and here we will add format Volkswagen is the best here we can also and after that we will enter this here and that's it and here as you can see here we are firstly uh car we are printing car info then my volvo my volvo is best and after that we are printing car info volvo s40 volkswagen is the best car info volkswagen golf 7 2014 so uh here however when you consider working with a large program that needs to store many first and last names separately functions like uh, get formatted name like we get, or get car info becomes very useful so you store first and last names or car maker car model and car year separately and then call this function whenever you want to display a full name or full uh, car info that's it with today's lectures and here let's try this again and as you can see here we are using return to get this information from here to here and as you can see we are firstly using get car info which uh, here returns this and then returns this and then returns this and after that we are printing this in first we didn't use any variables to print in bmw and after that we added format and entered my volvo 
and then Volkswagen is the best and after that we are entered formatted info of Volkswagen car object oriented programming is one of the most effective approaches to writing software in object oriented programming you write classes that represent real world things and situations so and you create objects based on these classes so when you write a class you define the general behavior that a whole category of objects can have so when you create individual objects from the class each object is automatically equipped with general behavior so you can then give each object whatever unique traits you desire and you will be amazed how well real world situations can be modeled with object oriented programming so making an object from a class is called instantiation so and you work with instances of a class so in this section you will write classes and create instances of these classes and you will specify the kind of information that can be stored in instances and you will define actions uh, that can be taken with these instances so you will also write classes that extend the functionality of existing classes uh, so similar classes can share common functionality and you can do more with less code so you will store your classes in modules and import classes written by other programmings into your program files so learning about object-oriented programming will help you see the world as the programmer or coder does so it will help you understand your programs and not just what's happening line by line code by code but also bigger window here and bigger concepts behind it so knowing the logic behind classes or object-oriented programming will treat you think logically so you can write programs that effectively address almost any problem you encounter so classes also make life easier for you and other programmers and uh, you will work with as you take increasingly comp complex challenges so when you and other programs write code or programs based on the same kind of logic you will be able to understand each other's work and your programs will make sense to the people you work with allowing everyone to accomplish more so you can model almost anything using classes now we will write a simple class which here we will create a car uh the that represent car but not one car in particular but any car so what do we know about most cars well they all have car makers they all have models and years and we also know that the, uh, most cars are automatic or manual right so use three pieces of information which is car model make and year and those behaviors which is uh, automatic and manuals will go in our car class because they are common to most cars so this class will tell python to make a new ob object representing a car after our car uh, class is written we will use it to make individual instances so each of uh, which represents one specific class so now we're going to create a a car class so each instance created from the car class will store a car model and make uh, this will be same variable and the year and we will give each car the ability to uh, drive and stop or actually we can also add automatic and manual but yeah we will decide that here so class car here class car and here we will add uh, just a simple simple program that x uh, that written written for cars and here we will use init but, but you will learn what init is so init here and we will add self name uh, or car model make and model car make and model and after that we will enter the year and after that we will here we are initializing uh initial make make and model 
model year year and let's actually add the gearbox also right gear box so here we'll add gear box so gearbox can also be automatic manual cvt is a different kind of gearbox but it's still gearbox right but uh, in this case we will add just automatic and manual gearboxes in our cars so we will also define a new but inside the car class so here we have this indentation so here we will define inside this car class the drive drive here we will use self and that you will you will understand what these keywords are and um, print f here still dot name oops inside the braces here self dot name or uh, self dot make and model and is now driving and also we will use make and model uh, also we will add year self dot year and also we will add self dot year box box is now driving right so for example bmw 2015 bmw 528 uh, e here year 2015 and gearbox is automatic is now driving right and after that we will add another year another function which is, is going to be let's stop here right so let's stop stop driving and here we will add also add self so here we will print f print here with format and we will copy this actually let's instead of copying this let's write this right now here self dot car uh, make and model make and model year and so gearbox is stopped that's it so now i will uh, explain this one by one so here oh sorry it, it will not uh, return anything because we didn't use this class we just defined it we are not using that yet but here let's first explain it and then let's create examples from it so here there's a lot of notice here but don't worry so you will see the structure through the this course uh, through this section and have lots of time to get used to it so first we define a class called here we define oh sorry so we define a class sorry here let me actually use my marker so here we define a class called car so by convention capital capitalized names refer to classes in python so there are no parentheses in the class definition here because we are creating this class from scratch so uh, we then write uh, the doc 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 string uh, so I, so this uh, doc, doc string here describing here what class does so actually let me write this here doc string this is a doc string here and so here uh, we also we are firstly we are here seeing init method so here oops actually here so a function that's part of a class is method 
everything you learned about function applies to methods as well. The only practical difference from now is the way we call methods. So the init method here, uh, the init method you are seeing here, actually let me use different color. The, this init method here, make it bigger so you can see the characters. So this init method here is special method that Python runs automatically whenever we create a new instance based on the car class. So this method has two leading underscores and here two underscores and two trailing underscores. A convention that's helped prevent Python's default method names from conflicting with your method names. So make sure to use the two underscores on each side of init. So if you just use one each side, the method won't be called automatically when you use your class, which can result in errors that are difficult to identify. So here we define init method to have three parameters. No, actually one, two, three, four parameters. The self, actually let me, yes, here, the self, make and model, year, and gearbox, right? So the self parameter is required in the method definition and it must come first before the other parameters here. So this should be first, as I said. So it must be included in the definition because Python casts this method later to create instance of car and the method call will automatically pass the self argument and every method call associated with an instance automatically passes self which is a reference to the instance itself so it gives the individual instance access to the attributes and methods in the class so when we make an instance of car python will call this init here method from the car class and we will pass car a make and model a year and the gearbox as arguments and self here is passed automatically so we don't need to pass it so whenever we want to make an instance from the, our car class we will provide values for only the last parameters uh, which is make and model year and gearbox and not self here so the two variables are defined in the body of the init method each have the prefix self here here self self and self self actually not this here self and self right so any variable prefixed with self is available to every method in the class and we will also be able to access these variables through any instance created from the class so the line self name here then the line self make and model here actually let me write another code here the self make and model ops actually let me uh, we will write this here self make and make and model equals make and model here we will get an error here here self make and model We will do it inside this. So here, oops, actually let me delete this here. So here, self, the line self make and model uh, equals make and model takes the value associated with the parameter make and model and assigns to it the variable make and model, which is then attached to the instance being created. So the same process happens with the self um for example year or gearbox equals gearbox and the variables that are accessible through instances like this are called attributes so the car class has two other methods uh the, which is drive and stop driving because these methods doesn't need additional information to run we just define them to have one parameter which is self so the instances we create later will have access to these methods in other words they will be able to uh, drive and stop here and for now the drive and stop don't do much and they simply print a message saying that our car model year uh, gearbox is stopped or 
uh, in drive here make and model year gearbox is now driving so but the concepts can be extended to realistic situations so uh you can if you can for example do it for a computer game or real world applications or so on which you will learn in next lectures think of a class as a set of instructions for how to make an instance so the car class is set of instructions that tells python how to make individual instances representing specific cars so let's make an instance representing a specific car here so under the uh, here we will use without identification here we will use my bmw here and bm uh, car here of course bmw is car and here we will add here actually you can use control and p here c t r l here and p to uh, see the information that or uh, the functions you can provide but here we are also seeing this which is we need first we need to provide the make and the model actually let me here in the first day we need to provide make and model year and gearbox here this is the same so as you learned in previous lecture we don't need we don't need to provide self as a parameter so we will ignore it here make first we are putting make and model year and gearbox so in make and model we will we will write a string of course so bmw uh three 25 325 e here and the year is gonna be 2002 and the gearbox is gonna be automatic so that's it and after that we will print the instance of which you will add here you will learn all of these codes what this codes do and why are they doing this so my cars uh, make and model is here and here we are my bmw dot make and model and uh, here print again format my cars my cars car years years of production year of production of production is the my bmw dot year year is it right make and we have make and model we have year yes we got an actually let's try this yes we got an error here car object is now attribute year so first we are entering bmw 310 actually instead we need to here my bmw dot year we have drive stop driving we have make and model of course we need to make it like this self uh, we forgot this here self year year here self gearbox yeah gearbox is gearbox that's it and here we will get here and as you can see we this gearbox and year is appeared here so first we're gonna print year let's run this here and after that we will also print the gearbox type print my cars gearbox box type is and here we will enter my bmw dot gearbox here that's it now i will explain all of these codes what these do and here as you can see we have successful output here so now we will explain all of this here so the 
R class we are using here is the one we just wrote in the previous lecture. So here we tell Python to create a car whose name, my car here, my BMW here, whose car make and model is BMW 325e. And the car year of production is 2002 and the car gearbox is automatic. So when Python reads this line, it calls the init method in our car class with arguments uh, the make and model year and gearbox in this case is well, as i said bmw 325e 2002 and automatic in as gearbox here and now uh, then the init method create instances representing this particular car and sets the name uh, sets the make and model year and other attributes using the values we provided so we assign that instance to the variable my bmw the naming convention is helpful here so we can usually usually assume that capitalized names like cars refer to class and lowercase like my bmw refers to a single instance created from a class to access the attributes of an instance you use dot notation so we access the value of my bmw's attribute using dot by writing bmw year or bmw make mic and model bmw gearbox so we use dot to access the value of my bmw's attributes named make and model year gearbox so this is the instance and this is the attributes so dot notation is used often in python so this syntax demonstrates how python finds an attributes value so here python looks at the instance my car and then finds the attribute make and model uh, with uh, my bmw right so this is the same attribute referred as the self mic and model in the class car so we use the same approach to work with the attribute year or gearbox so the output here is looks exactly like this firstly we my cars make and mobile model is bmw so we use my my bmw dot attribute make and model uh, we use my bmw dot year my bmw dot gearbox so we can also call method so after we create an instance from the class car we can use dot notation to call any method defined in car so let's make our car to drive or stop driving right so after this after print methods or you can also add the there or there as well so if you add here my bmw uh, here we not defined my bmw so uh, you add to as the syntax you need to add use this variable after the variable created so here my bmw is not created that's why we are getting an error so after bmw created we can add uh, for example my bmw dot drive and here as you can see we got nothing uh, so no actually here the bmw 300 25 e 2002 automatic is not driving and after that we are printing a car make and model so oh sorry let's delete it and after printing the specifications and information about our car we can call the drive and stop driving methods right so my bmw dot drive my bmw dot stop driving my bmw dot drive and my bmw dot stop driving and actually what bmws do good is drifting so let's actually use uh, add another method here which is drifting start drifting here drifting and we use self here and after that we will copy this actually it's, yeah we, we will use print f here so now we will use self dot make and model and self that year after that we will also add self a gearbox is drifting here think here let's add more d here that's it and after now 
we are driving driving now and after that we're gonna start drifting so start drifting and as you can see here bmw 325 2002 automatic is the drifting here so this syntax is quite useful when attributes and methods have been given appropriately descriptive names like uh the start driving start drifting stop uh, driving and drive so we can also create a multiple instances so, so you can create as many instances uh, from a class as you need so let's create the second car here let's actually use the my bugatti <laughs> no it's so much so let's my honda here honda and we will use uh, my honda equals here so now we will uh, again use the car or actually we can also use the create a honda here it's here so bmw or <laughs> it's honda right so honda civic here it's gonna be 2015 let's actually use strings we can also use integers but yeah string is more clear so and let's make it manual right more ho here that's it and here after that we can also use my honda here my on oops my honda dot for example we can also do this my my inst instead we can also change my my bmw to my honda so we will get same result but different values uh, honda and my honda and after that we can also uh, my honda honda dot let's make it drive we can also drive honda we can do the same things that we did uh, with bmw like my honda make so make my honda drift start drifting that's it we can also add honda inside after the uh, bmw because honda is defined here and we are adding our code here now let's run this and here this is uh, the output it's successfully we here this is a lot of output right so this is the output here so in this example we create a car named my honda and here each uh, car here my bmw and my honda is separate instance with its own set of attributes capable uh, of the same set of functions so here uh, my car make and model is bmw 325 e for example my car make and model is honda civic uh, here and my my car's years of production is 2015 and my car's years of production is 2002 so this is how we work with the classes and their instances and see you in next lecture thank you for watching